Okay, so look. I am having internet issues at the moment. I don't know why I turned the light on. I, I don't even want to be in this room. I pressed record by mistake. I was just setting up my camera and pressed record by mistake. And so we're doing it now. We're doing it live, baby. Okay, so I've been putting this off for a long ass time. Uh, but I think today is the day where we're going to lay around watching the entire Nanoha franchise. Maho Shoujo Lyrical Nanoha. Um, I mean, can I finish the entire thing in one day? Probably not, but it's worth a try. It'll probably take me multiple days. This will probably be a long ass video. Uh, excuse me. So, I've watched a bunch of Nanoha in the past. I've watched season one before. Uh, I've watched part of season two but never finished it. I've watched both season one and season two movies. Uh, and I watched the first episode of the season three and then never got any further than that. And then I watched Vivid Strike, which is good. Um, so that's my experience with the Nanoha franchise, as well as having watched uh, these old YouTube videos about the Nanoha franchise, uh, which I quite enjoy. Uh, there's nothing else to say about, about Nanoha, really. I'm more into mag magical girl stuff than I used to be. I've been slowly making my way through Cardcaptor Sakura for, like, years. I think I'm on a... Thing, thing is, the thing about, about, like, normal magical girl shows is they're really long, right? They have a million billion episodes. Um, <clears throat> but unlike... Now I'm not even a shonen guy. Like I, I don't I don't really like to watch the long shonen anime either. But at least with those, you have a situation where they, they do a sort of like every episode ends on a cliffhanger type of deal. Like <clears throat> Hunter Hunter, which is the only one I've really enjoyed, does that, right? Every episode ends on a cliffhanger. It's all part of this one continuous story. Whereas Magic Real shows, traditional ones, Cardgup Sakura, Pikir. You know, all of the ones. <laughs> you, you know, the ones. Doemi, etc. They're very contained episodic stories. Which makes it... doesn't make them bad. They're, they're great. I like the ones I've seen. Uh, but it makes it hard to marathon them. So I tend to go pretty slow. I think I'm on, like, episode 50 of Nanoha or something. Um, but it's taken me a long-ass time to get there. But I don't know why I said that. Did I say Nanoha? Sakura? I meant Sakura. If I said Nanoha, I meant Sakura. Uh, but Nanoha is obviously a 12 episodes or something anime, 13 episodes, uh, but with many seasons. It's different, right? It's uh, Everyone knows about Nanoha, right? It's like a otaku-oriented magical girl. That's my that's my whole shit. I made a, I made a, a list on... Uh, damn, the... The screen puts out a lot of brightness, doesn't it? They don't fuck around with that. Uh, if we go on my anime list, dot net, uh, I'm having the reason I'm doing this is because I'm having internet issues right now, and so I can't do anything that requires being online. And I have the entire franchise uh, saved to my my external hard drive, so I can just watch it. What am I looking for? Oh yeah, my uh, my goddamn interest stack. Best thing Mal has ever added. Interest stacks. Uh, what am I doing? Water, that's what I want. My internet is fucking dying. If you go, all I'm saying is I made an interest stack on Mal for Otaku into Magical Girls. And uh, I'm into this as a concept, is what I'm saying. You know, I've watched. I've watched quite a few of them. I've watched... I made a video about it. I made a video about it once. Go watch it. Anyway, let's, let's quit the... Let's quit the preamble and get straight into this. Episode 1. Oh. Slow ass. Oops. I opened it twice. Okay. <laughs> Episode 1. I'm laying around, 
watching season one of Mao Shoujo Lyrical Nanoha. And what's what we're gonna do? We're gonna, I've been putting this off for ages. Uh, we're gonna watch the entire Nanoha franchise. I probably can't get through it in one day. Uh, you know, I've given this a try a few times. I'm, I'm comfortable talking to the camera while the OP plays, especially on episode one. Because I've seen episode one like three times when I've tried and failed to do this. Um, you know, I have some history of the Nanoha franchise. I really like the movies. Uh, I haven't seen the, I think the third movie that I haven't watched, but there's a movie version of the first and second seasons. Uh, and especially the movie of the second season I thought was really good. Uh, I even have a poster up for it on my wall. And I also really liked Vivid Strike, which is like a spin-off uh, series. Uh, and, you know, I have a general appreciation for Taco or into Magical Girl shows in this vein that arguably Nanoha invented. Uh, you know, maybe maybe Nanatsuro Drops invented it, but it's, you know, they, you know, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, Nanoha. It's just a it's just a laying around watching video. You know how these go. We lay around, we watch them. Uh, we got a lot of anime to get through. What are, what is that? The Nanoha, Nanoha A's, Nanoha Vivid, Nanoha Stri Strikers. Strikers comes before Vivid. There's at least four seasons, is what I'm saying here. Uh, but yeah, episode one. Engage. Here's something that I appreciate. The the background characters actually have anime colored hair. Normally, like random insert background characters that are never gonna show up again. Uh, you know, they just have have black hair. Sometimes they're just scribbles. They actually make they act like these characters look more like anime main characters than Nanoha does. <laughs> it's the fucking legendary part of episode one where it just looks like it's a completely different show for one cut because they put all the animation budget into just making Nanoha move a bunch right here in this shot. It's so stupid. <laughs> I don't know why Shinbo does this. He used to do this all the time back in the day. The, the fucking single cut in the first episode that just has a bunch of, just lots of frames. Oh, oh that wasn't it. It must, be, it, must be, it must be the next one. This is it. This is it. Look. <laughs> Just, <laughs> why does she move like that? Okay. The transformation sequence in episode one. Let's put that on a short list for best magical girl transformations. That was fucking sick. I didn't remember it being that fucking sick. The way the weapon stuff thing, like, constructs it. That's one thing I've always loved about Nanoha is how, like, weirdly mechanical and intricate, almost mecha-esque the, like, weapons are that the magical girls use, it's fucking sick. We are now fully into the reason why I've never done this successfully before, which is that the first season of Nanoha is most... It's, like, a good chunk of it at the beginning is, like, just kind of a mid-tier magical girl show that it's pretty repetitive, and it's not terrible, but it's, it's, it's very poorly paced. It's very, very... It's a bit of a slog, let's just say that. It's a bit of a slog to get through. Um, but there's enough cool, like, unlike previous times that I tried to watch this, this time I'm appreciating the cool stuff a lot more. Like, the the, the different stuff to do with the weapons and and the way they, the attacks work and the, the technicalities of it. That's That's a lot more interesting to me now. I mean, what's happening right now is fucking sick, okay? Nano has, like, blasting giant laser beams. It's fucking sick. You can't deny that it's fucking sick. But, like, that's, like, two minutes out of a 20-minute episode, you know? And a lot of it is just, like... I don't know. I'm all for the slice of life -y stuff. You guys know me. You guys know I'm a slice of life head. It's not necessarily... The slice of... I don't know how to... It's just very... It's a bit of a... It's a bit... There's a... Like, slice of life isn't just good because nothing happens. Like, if I... If I I've been trying to impress this upon people for a long time. 
The idea that nothing happens in slice of life shows is like blatantly wrong. In fact, all the good slice of life shows, things are constantly happening. Like, you know, I don't know. There's either jokes happening all the time or uh, drama happening, overarching plot. Like Hidamari Sketch, a good chunk of Hidamari Sketch is like, you know, dealing with her personal issues related to art and related to studying and so on. Like, for, like, season two and three of Hidamari Sketch, you know, is, like, fucking suffering. <laughs> she is, like, going through it. And it's about how her friends support her through that and how through the experiences in the Hidamari saw she grows as a character and has this character arc. But, that see, it's not, like, just... Or, like, in Gotcha Yusa, there's, like, that episode, for example, where there's a storm but they need to deliver medicine to someone. I was like, that's a really dramatic episode with a lot of emotions running high and like tension and like action even. Like the idea that slight, nothing happens in slice of life shows is just wrong. The closest a slice of life show comes, like isn't it like things are always happening. There are times when things slow down and you're just spending time with these characters and doing nothing else. Like the first three episodes of Lucky Star, or the ep- certain parts of Gotchusa, or certain parts of season one of Arya. You know, th- these things do happen. But in that situation, they're relying on strong tone. And Nanoha doesn't have any of these things. It doesn't have the sh- super strong tone of a really good slice of life show. It doesn't have any real comedy in it. Uh... It's just when nothing's happening in Nanoha, it's just boring because there's not like there is nothing happening. Uh, but I'm gonna slog through it because I know the show gets more interesting as it goes on. I I know the plot of Nanoha is fucking insane and uh, things are gonna happen. I mean, we haven't even met Fate Fate Testarossa yet, who's like the best character in the franchise. So. You know, we, we 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 sit here and we slog. That's what we're here to do. This is this is what the whole laying around watching is all about. It's about laying around and sitting through the the, the, the kind of shitty and weird parts of, of of shitty and weird anime to get to the nuggets, uh, the jewels, the jewel seeds. It's about collecting the jewel. That's what I'm doing. I am the the magical girl collecting the jewel seeds. All right, episode four, the episode where fate was introduced. That's some of, that was a good fucking episode of anime, man. That's some real fucking anime shit right there, man. Fate's fucking weapon thing. What are they called? I got the wiki up. They're called the device. Her fucking device thing. So fucking sick. The way it moves and animates. Her whole introduction. The way that she attacks Nanaha and she says, come, come in. Or whatever. And then fucking laser beams her. That's some sick fucking shit, man. That's some sick ass shit. Am I am I a poser? This is my question. Am I a poser? I don't know how to watch anime. I'm too fucking ADHD to like look at this. Let's compare. This is Paz, okay? Paz is a based individual who actually likes anime. And look at this. Okay, we got 262.9 days worth of anime watched. 1,391 completed shows. Only 46 shows dropped. Okay? This is what... This is what a real anime list should look like. This is what a normal person looks like. Uh, You see this bar? How it's, like, mostly blue with a little sliver of red? This is what a normal person looks like. And then this is mine. I've dropped almost as many shows as I've watched. I just drop shows like fucking crazy. I I don't even know what do I even have on hold. Does this do this? Yeah. These shows. I see. Yeah, these shows are indeed on hold. That's true. That is that is accurate. But like watching makes fucking sense, right? Like look at my watching. This is my watching list. It makes no sense. I've got Bocce the Rock on here, which I still haven't finished. 
I was watching this while it was airing, okay? I got up to episode 8 while it was airing, and then never finished it, so it's just still on my watching list. Cardcaptor Sakura, I've been watching for about 5 years. I've never- this is- I don't know why this is even on here, I'm never gonna fucking watch that. I'm never gonna finish Dr. Stone, there's just no sh- I, I don't know, maybe I will one day, but... I, I'm not watching this. Calling myself watching this, like I put this on when I watched the first episode when it came out. When did when was this? This was fucking spring 2023, a year ago. I put this on my watching because I watched the first episode and I was like, yeah, I'll watch more of that. And then I just never did. Fucking Handmade May. I don't even remember when I started watching that, but I haven't watched an episode in months. How Can I Receive? I think has been on here for a year. This one I also was watching while it was airing and never finished. Hoshizuka Telepath? I thought I finished Hoshizuka Telepath. Am I crazy? Did I never finish that show? What the fuck? I never finished this show? I thought I finished this. What the hell? See, I don't even know what's going on. This Konosuba anime. Again, I put this on watching in spring 2023 when it was airing. When I started watching the first episode and liked it. And then never fucking watched any more of it. So it's just got one episode and I'm just like watching it. But I'm not. Same with Mao Jojo Magical Destroyers. Uh, I'm actually watching this as it's airing. Mao Jojo ni Aki, Ako Garete. Sakura Sono Pet no Kanajo, I haven't watched an episode in months. Seto Kaine Ichizon, I haven't watched an episode in like well over like two or three months. I don't know how the fuck Slow Loop is still on here. I all, this is actually insane. I started watching this in winter 2022. <laughs> I was watching this while it was airing. I started watching this in winter 2022 and just never took it off my fucking watching list because I never finished it. Taisho Yaku Musume. Uh, th that's like a couple weeks ago. I started watching this. I don't. I I don't know if I'm gonna drop it or not. I didn't really like it that much. Uh, Milky Homes. I actually am watching. I watched the first five episodes yesterday. I'm gonna finish it, maybe. I was gonna finish it today, but then I got distracted doing Nanoha stuff. Uh, again, Teng this is another show that I started watching when it was airing, and then never finished. Uh, watched the first episode of this back in spring. Two it's all spring 2023 stuff. That was the last anime season that I was really engaged in, and picked up a bunch of shows. Um, and Mug Cup, I still haven't fucking finished season 2. Like, this is absurd, right? Like, surely this is absurd. If you want to call me a poser, a poser and a loser, I mean, you can do that. I deserve it. I don't deserve- I don't know, man. I have barely watched any anime. And I- I don't know, what's wrong with me? Is- is this something deeply wrong with me? Am I even a real person? Have I ever seen an anime? How many, sh like, it's actually insane how few shows I've seen. Like, I've only seen fucking 400 anime. That's nothing. <laughs> That's, like, not, I mean, I guess, like, you know, more than that. 700-ish. But, yeah. If you count everything, it's, like, 700-ish. 750 something. It's fucking absurd. That's like, I haven't even seen a thousand shows. I'm not even that close to seeing a thousand shows. But like, what? Do it. Do, do people who have that? Do they like spam music videos and OVAs and movies in order to get their like mouth stats to look pretty? Is that what they do? Yo, why is? How my friends with? Oh, that's pause. Oh, I was thought it was on my own profile. Oops. I was very confused there. I was like, am I friends with myself somehow? But no, that's, that's, that's just, okay. I don't know if Paz watches my channel anymore. He used to. Man, I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> like this shit. I don't know. I haven't updated this in a long ass time. Long ass time. I probably put Kuro Neko from Orayimo on here. I don't know. I, I need to... Another thing I need to do is rewatch Mahoraba. That's like something else that's been on the back of my mind for ages. Because I watched Mahoraba, thought it was the best thing ever at, for like two days. Did nothing but tell everyone how amazing Mahoraba was. And then never thought about it again. 
Like I've, I, I've either got to read the manga or rewatch the anime. Cause at the time it was like the most incredible thing I'd ever witnessed. And then I don't know. I just never thought about it again in my life. I got to fix that about myself. But anyway, let's, this is all distractions. This is all distractions from fate, fate, Testarossa. I keep calling the show fate in my head, but there's just a character called fate. I just finished episode six. Is this show fucking amazing? Is this show secretly like a fucking 10 out of 10 god to, I don't know what I'm saying, maybe not that good, but is this show like good as fuck? <laughs> like, I don't know what it, somehow that episode, I just locked in to the groove. Like the, the show has kind of like odd pacing, unusual, not typical. Um, And it was like, I finally locked into the groove, like I'm playing bass, right? And there's some weird ass drum groove. And I'm I'm sitting here and I'm like That's what Nanaho is really like. That's what Nanaho is really like. It's a fact that my anime watching skills have degraded. I keep getting distracted. I spent a while just playing bass, and then I spent a while just like loading up TR Walkway and practicing air shots, pipe air shots on Demo Man in Team Fortress 2. Just because I had an urge to hit hit some pipes like I'm smoking crack, you know what I'm saying? But Nanoha, listen, it's Nanoha. I also got this. I get this is one of the things I do all the time when I'm watching anime or playing visual novels. Is I'm I'm watching the thing or I'm I'm reading the visual novel or whatever, and I go over to the Mal or VNDB page for whatever I'm I'm doing. And then I just end up going down like rabbit holes on those websites, just doing random shit, like looking into random, random ass shit. <laughs> and takes it and I'm like, oh, fuck, an hour, an hour has gone by. And I just pause the episode to go look around on Mal, like some fucking director or what, I don't know, whatever. This is why I, I, I keep getting fucking distracted. It's taking me like, uh, two, this should be four hours. I think it's, I think I've been watching this for like eight hours, and I'm only on episode nine. Which if I if I just commit, this is the problem. I'm worried that I'm gonna fucking fall asleep before I finish this. It's like midnight, and I normally sleep at about right now. I'm sleeping at about one a.m. So it's like I have exactly one hour to watch exactly one hour's worth of anime before I fall asleep, which should be should be doable as long as I just don't get distracted. So I'm going to really try and focus up and finish this episode before I go to sleep. It's easy to forget that this anime was directed by Akiyuki Shinbo until you just see like random Shinboist shots like this one and uh, wait a second, this one. I mean, this is such a cool shot. The fucking Nanoha silhouette in shadow with the gate or, or like the, the fencing fucking diamond shape oh man and it suits the tone of the scene so well i am i'm so fucking nano pilled right now this is giga kino it i better be honest like i think it kind of stumbles a little bit at the beginning like i think the first maybe i think episode one is pretty good and then like two three four Four is when fate gets introduced, and that's pretty sick. It, but it's, it doesn't really get going until, like, halfway through the show, when it suddenly becomes a sci-fi anime. And then it's fucking park. It is so... I'm so nano-appealed. You don't understand. 
Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see this. You see this? It is 12.30 a.m. It is 12.30 a.m. Damn, my camera's fucking freaking out. Focus. There we go. 12.30 a.m. And as you can see, Naruha originally aired... Where is it? It's somewhere around here. I don't know why I'm zoomed in so much. Here. At 12.30 a.m. on Sundays. It's a Friday today, but... We are now getting the truest, most authentic Nanoha experience at the correct time. I just, I don't know, I thought that was... I, I just watched Maho Shoujo Lyrical Nanoha, and it was great. Not perfect, very much flawed, but great. And there she is, Nanoha herself. Um, okay, I'm very sleepy, it's well past my bedtime, so I'm going to try and try and get my thoughts out there. Uh, first thing I want to say is I cannot overstate how much the weapons in this show and the fights are fucking sick. The way the weapons, like, say a little phrase in their, like, robot voice, and they all speak in different accents, I know in... A is it good they play more into this it's like a fucking producer tag it's like you know father stretch my hands where it's like nah, nah, if you're a metro don't trust you i'm gonna shoot you beautiful morning you know that where it's if you're the young metro i stole this from my 100 gex remix it's that like when they when the fucking motherfucker goes divine buster and then it's like a fucking producer tag it's sick Whoever thought of doing that is a fucking genius. It's the fucking sickest shit ever. Okay. The, and the way the weapons, like, after an attack, like, fucking spew steam and, like, do mechanical movements, like, it's fucking, it's just so cool. And the, like, there's such a good, those, those fight, like, oftentimes anime fights where the characters are sort of floating around in midair shooting attacks at each other, they kind of just, turn into mush. Like, it's how I feel about a lot of, like, Dragon Ball and stuff. Like, they, they kind of just, everyone's floating, everyone's just talking all the time. They 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 kind of just turn into mush, you know? But there's a really good sense of scale in Nanoha that isn't present in most anime that try and do this kind of fight, fight scenes. Like, the, the sense of the power and scale of these beam attacks is really, really well done. And just aesthetically, they're very interesting. They're very well animated. Um, they they have life to them. The 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 there's and it's all in the little details of the way the weapons work and stuff like that. Like you will see, it will it will go from like a very close up shot of, uh, you know, a weapon doing some mechanical movement or something, and then it will pull out to like an ultra wide shot. Right? Where the character is just like a speck floating in the air. You see a giant fucking magic circle thing pop up in front of them. And then a beam. And it, it, I don't know. It sells it. It fucking sells it so well. And this is really what I want to say about the show being like flawed and not perfect. Is when it's doing that, it's great. Um, the problem is the show is weird. <laughs> like, previously, I... On my anime list, I had dropped this show at episode 3 and given it a 5. Uh, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to do if you've only seen the first 3 episodes of the show. The first 3 episodes of the show are probably about a 5 out of 10 in terms of quality. Uh, because episode 4 is when fate gets introduced, which really shakes up that's the, the meat of the show, right? But even then... It's a while, I think it's episode 6, when the Time Space Bureau gets involved and it turns into a sci-fi anime. That's when the show really gets good. Like, it takes a long-ass time to get to the point. But it, it works once you've seen the whole thing. It doesn't work if you're me and you're the type of guy who will drop things unless you're doing it for a project like this. And the thing is, I've known this about Nanoha for ages. 
because I've watched this video that's like the entire history of the Nanaha franchise, and I also have watched the two movies, which, by the way, I will not be re-watching as part of this video because I've already seen them, and because they're just sort of recaps of the first two seasons anyway, and since I'm going to watch them, I'm not going to watch the movies, is what I'm saying. So it's not technically the entire... I'm, I'm also not sure I'm going to watch Vivid Strike because Nan it's, it's a spin-off, and also I've already seen it. Uh, I might, well, I'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes by the end of this. If I, if I want to watch Rivet Strike, I might, but I'm pretty much sure I'm not going to watch the movies. Um, but anyway, back to the weird ass pacing. Basically, this show has like insanely high highs. What I'm, what I'm getting at is, Naruto has, in, in, it's, it has insanely high highs, but it's not always at that level. Like the, it's it's not a bad thing that the show takes a while to ramp up to, to the really crazy shit because it makes the crazy shit have more impact. You having seen the progression, um, which I mean, this whole thing is really a critique of the way I watch anime, where I drop things way too easily because there are probably many shows like this that I just wouldn't have a particular reason to stick with. Like now, I have a reason to stick with because I know about its cultural impact and importance, and I, you know. I've, it has some external meta reason for me to dedicate time to it. And Strike, which is, was a similar thing, um, I think in the future probably Symphogear Gear will be a similar thing when I get around to watching that. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure there are a bunch of anime that aren't popular or long-running or whatever that have a similar thing that I've just dropped because I drop things too easily. Uh, so that's a problem. That's a, that's definitely a, a critique of the way I watch anime that is, that is very valid. And I don't know, I don't know what to do about it, frankly, but anyway, back to the show. <laughs> um, here's the, the weird thing about the, the, the structure of the show though. As I said, it takes a long time to get going, like really get going. Once it gets going, it's fucking sick. And then you have the climax of the anime, which is actually... The fight between Fate and Nanoha, which I think is like episode 10 or 11 or something like that. That is the peak of the anime. That is the emotional climax. It's the, it's the, the climax in terms of like the quality of the fight scene. And like, the, it's fucking amazing. It's better in the movie, obviously, because they have a higher budget. But it's still great in the anime, uh, the TV anime. Uh, it's, a, it's just a great fight scene. And even though, like, actually the fighting isn't, like, that crazy, it's the emotions that drive it. Like, the context, and the, I don't know, it's a great, great fucking episode. And a, and a, you know, great sequence. And that's the peak. And then they fucking go and do this this other shit with the, 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 the Fate's mother, which is good emotionally. Like, as the, the emotional arc of Fate in the last, like, two or three episodes is, is good. Like, that's... It's... I like it, but the actual content of the episodes that isn't focused on Fate's emotional arc, the stuff that's focused on them invading whatever, like that stuff, it was not very good in my opinion. And, and I think it was a, a, a little bit, especially in the last episode, like there was some, and this is rare because Aki Kishimbo is a great director, but I think there were some like flaws in the directing which is fair because, like, it's a difficult thing to direct, right? You're having to follow, like, five different characters all in different places, doing different shit in an environment that is meant to be alien and hostile that you haven't had time to set up. And so oftentimes I just had no idea where the fuck characters were in relation to each other or what they were really doing. Because there's just so much shit happening, and it's all happening in, like, a weird-ass environment that you haven't been prepared for. Like, there's no establishing the layout of this place. Um, and because everyone's just communicating psychically with each other, I don't know, the whole spatial relations, it kind of breaks down. Uh, which, you know, this is a very hard, <laughs> like, this is an impossible task to direct and make that all cohesive. But it was pretty confusing, and I feel like I kind of got lost in the last, you know, little bit of the show there. Um, where I kind of didn't, it was kind of hard for me to follow what was happening 
in terms of like where characters were in relation to each other and what they were doing and like time pressure and stuff like that. It, it's not that it completely broke the show, but to, it did like kind of break the tension. I feel like uh, that I was supposed to be feeling. Um, you know, I still think the emotional beats hit. So in the end, it wasn't like a huge detriment, but. Uh, yeah, I, I did think that was a bit of a flaw in the, in the show. Like, really, the peak climax of the show is the fight, be- the final fight between Fate and Nanoha. Um, but then episode 13 is mostly, I mean, not just mostly, it is entirely an epilogue. Like, the, the real ending of the plot is episode 12, and then episode 13 is entirely epilogue. And it's mostly bad. <laughs> like... I don't. Bad is not necessarily the right word. It's mostly kind of nothing. It's mo- it's mostly like tying up loose ends and so on. And then like right at the end of episode thirteen, you get the the scene with Fate on Nanoha, like looking over the sea and like talking with each other for the first time, like truly, and like really actually becoming friends in that moment. And it's a great way to end the show. It's just it's just a wonderful scene, heartwarming. It's great. Honestly, I'm super fucking Nanoha pilled. And I'm very excited to watch A's tomorrow. Uh, it's not a perfect show by any means. Um, there's a bunch of weird shit in it. There's some really weird animation cuts sometimes. I will, The voice acting is great throughout. It is, like, really good. I thought Arf's voice actor was really good. I thought Nanoha's voice actor was really good. I mean... It has some great voice, like, really good voice work. There are some moments of really good direction from Akiyuki Shimbo. Um, The soundtrack was, like, pretty epic and intense when it needed to be. Uh, You know, and there were some genuinely impressive animation cuts, but there were also a bunch of, like, it's a very inconsistent show. That's really what I'm trying to get, get across to you, is that it has these, like, crazy highs, that are like fucking peak, but then it also spends a lot of time being, I don't want to say mid, um, but not at that level is what I'm saying. Like the quality fluctuates a lot throughout the runtime, but that's okay in my opinion. Like that gives the show a lot of character and soul, and it means that when they really do pull something crazy out, it like stands out even more. Um, so. I know this this is the part that sucks, but we have to do it. If I had previously given the show a 5 out of 10, what are we going to give it now? What are we going to give it now? I am going to do this and then go to sleep. Well, uh, I think it is a strong 7 to a light 8. But the question is, do I pick 7? Or do I pick 8? You see, according to Mao, 7 is good, 8 is very good. Frankly, I think it's an 8. 9 is great. It's, it's, I don't think it's quite a 9, but I'm going to go with 8, very good. I've also I've changed my mind on rating systems. I used to never give 10s. Because there's an asymmetry in rating systems, right? Like, you can imagine a show being a 1, and a 1 could be a 1, or it could be a 1.5, or it could be a, you know, 1.999 or something, right? You know, like, at the bottom of the scale, you can always go higher, but with 10, it goes up to 10. It doesn't go to, like... 10.8 10.8 that would be beyond the 10 point scale and so a 10 means the most perfect thing that could ever possibly exist that is completely flawless because anything less than that would be like a 9.9 right and if it's a 9 point something i'm calling it a 9 uh like a strong 9 but it still counts as a 9 you round down when you're doing rating systems so that's how i've always done it i've been like well i can't really give out 10s because like, even the most perfect anime 
I think, yeah, this you could probably improve some things about it. But now I'm more of the opinion that the numbers just represent the thing that Mal says next to the number. So 10 just means masterpiece, right? And there are a bunch of anime that I think are masterpieces. Uh, but I've decided to rate Nanoha an 8 out of 10. Um, definitely excited to watch A's. Uh, was there anything else I wanted to say? There was, but I don't remember. I remember thinking I should say this thing. And then I I, I, I don't know if I said it. Maybe I mentioned it already. I don't remember. But uh, good anime. Let's go ahead and rate some 10 out of 10s. Since we're doing this now, uh, oh, I look. I already gave some things ten out of ten. I don't think. Yeah, Lane is a masterpiece. Sure. Uh, I don't know that I'd give Gotcha Use of Bloom a ten out of ten. Uh, Gotcha Use of Season Two is fucking great, but I don't know if it's a ten out of ten. I I think nine is appropriate. Um. Hmm. Tamayura, is it a 10? It's really fucking good, but I don't know if it's a 10. Uh, Hidemori Sketch Hoshimitsu, not the specials. Those are The specials are good, but they're not a 10 out of 10. Kaon, Season 2. It's been a long time since I rewatched it, but I think a 9 is probably appropriate. Um... Hidemori Sketch Season 1, now that's something approaching a 10 out of 10. Now that that's the closest I can think of to a 10 out of 10. But, hmm. Well, so many people haven't watched the Hidemori Sketch specials. Like, if you like Hidemori Sketch, you should watch the specials. 365 is like, why did I give this a 7? This is, this is like... I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. My my ratings, just my whole ratings are fucked. Like a lot of this stuff, I don't even know when or why I rated it. What I did, but I mean, I think Hinamori Sketch is the closest I can think of, and Hoshimitsu is like maybe the peak of the series. I don't know. I I don't know. I need to rewatch Hinamori Sketch, uh, like the whole thing. Hoshimitsu is so fucking good. Season 1 is, I mean, the whole, like, I want to rate the whole series a 10 out of 10 as a, like, each individual season, I don't know if I can rate it a 10, but the Hidemai Sketch series as a whole is a 10 out of 10. I think, you know what, we're going to, we're going to upgrade to season 1. That's what we're going to do. Oops. We're going to upgrade season 1 to a 10. Does it just let you put anything in here? What the fu- Oh, this- What the hell? You can just put a hundred? No, it just downgrades it to a ten. Okay. I don't know why I have Take You Season 1 and Take You Season 9 as a ten, but that- I'll, I'll allow it. I'll accept it. That's fine. But by me. Um. Welcome to the NHK- that's a 9. It would be a 10 if it had more stuff from the book. Uh, I don't know why I'm fucking... The, this should be like an 8. Maybe, maybe I'll leave it as a 9. I don't know. This Kiki's delivery service, right? Majo no Takubin. Yeah. Again, it's been a long time since I watched it. So it just doesn't mean as much to me anymore. It's like Lane. Right, like I accept the lane is a masterpiece, but also I've 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 watched it eight times. I wrote a fucking dissertation about it. It's just noise to me now. It's just me. Like I've I've analyzed and reanalyzed and overanalyzed and watched and observed and and critiqued lane so much over the years. That it's it's just me. It's just lost all meaning. It's like when you say a word too many times and it just start, you, it it stops meaning anything. 
Like that's what I have for for Silver Experiments Lane. That's that's my Discord thing, not yours. You know, it's just it's just meaningless to me. I think the thing is, right? I have fucking diagnosed bipolar, so sometimes I'll just watch an anime, like the Tokyomi Moonface special, for example. Like this anime, I was just fucking having a spiritual experience watching this. I don't even know if it's that good, but I just remember the emo- like just thinking it was fucking crazy. I don't know. I'm I'm happy to give Hidamai sketch a ten out of ten. Gochiusa is borderline. It's borderline. You know what? After saying that I'm gonna start giving out tens, there's not that many tens. <laughs> there's not that many. What's a I'm trying to think. Any of like you know what, I guess I mean yeah, I think we're downgrading you to an 8. We're downgrading you to an 8, because who fucking cares about Midazaki? Um, and fucking End of Ava, that might be a 10. End of Ava might be a 10 out of 10 movie. I need to see it on the big screen. I know in America they just did a, a sh- like showings of, of End of Ava, so lots of people are talking about it. And I imagine watching it in a cinema is like a fucking spiritual experience. I bet it's incredible, but I don't have that uh, ability. Uh, yeah, looking through my nines, I don't know. I think Tamayura has the potential... I still haven't, like, I haven't watched the, the third season of Tamayura yet. Um, more, I, yeah, more aggressive. I think I've watched, like, none of it. Um, and then there's these, like, movies. Like, this might be my, like, they, these Tamayura movies have strong potential to be the best anime ever made. Like, they have strong potential to be... Like this, this fi- this the final Tamayura, this has the potential to, to be my favorite anime of all time. I'm just waiting to get around to it. I haven't even watched season three yet. But, I mean, Tamayura seasons one and two are fucking incredible and so criminally underrated. It's insane. The f- no one has seen Tamayura. It is so good. Like, if you like any slice of life anime if you like any uh, niche joke uh, fucking yashi k anime if you if you like emotions if you like even if you just like kaon okay if you like k a lot of people they like kaon they think kaon is great this is definitely as good as kaon like easily as good as kaon no question and yet no one fucking gives a shit about Tamayura. i don't know why if I had to relate it to another show, it would be Kaon. It's like a more laid back, healing and calming Kaon. You'll love it. Go go watch Tamayura. Like, I'm telling you. Okay, we're getting off topic. This is supposed to be a video about Nanoha. But Tamayura is so fucking good. <laughs> I can't believe I haven't watched... I, I don't know why I haven't watched more of it. To be honest, it's a, it's shameful. It's shameful that I haven't watched season three of Tamayura yet. Um, but I will. It'll it'll all happen, and then and then eventually I'll stop being an anime poser who's only watched three hundred ninety eight shows, eighty five point two days worth of anime. One day I'll stop being an anime poser. I'll actually watch some shows. Okay, day two. Day two. Time to nano her A's. Nano her A's myself. We're gonna nano her A's myself in day two of the nano her journey, the nano her franchise. The entire laying around watching the entire nano her franchise. We're going into day two. I played some TF2. Good game. You should play TF2. If you don't play TF2, it's a good game. Uh. 
I should like like this is not okay. I should go like shave my head. Hold on. I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. I've looked like shit for like weeks because I've just been too lazy to shave my head. I like I, I like I I know at this point I'm not delusional enough to think that I'm not balding. Like we, it's very obvious, right? So I I I didn't shave my head because it was fucking cold. It's been really cold. It's just turned to spring and it's finally warming up a little bit. And I was like, I'm going to be too cold if I shave my head. So I was like, I'm going to buy a hat. So I, I bought this hat so that I could I could wear it when I shaved my head so that I wouldn't be so cold. Wow, this feels weird. I haven't I haven't worn this bald before. It's kind of nice, actually. It's kind of comforting. But anyway, I, I didn't shave my head because I thought, oh, I'm going to be too fucking cold. I'm going to be too cold. <sighs> and then I bought the hat and I still didn't shave my head because I was just lazy. Why? Why? I just knew that they would look terrible <laughs> and feel bad. It gets all greasy. My hair's always, always gotten greasy ever since I was a kid. Anyway, Nano her A's. Why did I put this off for so long? It's insane. I looked like such shit in the beginning of this video, probably. Uh, fucking banger OP. One of the best OPs all time, in my opinion. Nano her A's. Violence. Let me pull up the shit. Okay, let me pull up the shit. Hold on. Let me pull up the shit. We're gonna pull up the shit. Um, I know you can't hear the music. I got a fucking copyright strike on my on my my uh. I, IDMR channel, I got a copyright strike, not a copyright warning or whatever, a copyright strike on my channel for making an AMV, a nano AMV once, and so I am like being very careful with what I show. So that's how it goes. You want to take a little thumb that goes like. So, you, know, you know how it is. Anyway, not of her A's. Hype. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking get this shit. Let's get this shit. Unfortunately, I just realized that I have uh, no food in the house, so we're, putting, we're actually not going to watch Nanoha. We're going to go to the shops, and then we're going to watch Nanoha. Bro, it's the sickest shit ever. I'm telling you, Nanoha is the sickest shit ever put to screen. I don't know how the fuck I didn't like this shit initially when I watched it. I'm, I'm telling you, Nanoha is the fucking sickest shit ever made. At the end of episode one of A's... When fucking Nanoha's getting destroyed by the redhead bitch, and then fate shows up, sight form, fucking sick ass shit, and then the bitch is like, ah, oh, Nakamaka, and she's like, camera fucking close up on her face, and she's like, Tomodachi, Tom Tomodachi there, ah, oh, fucking sick, and ah oh, man, so good, so good. I just realized. You guys aren't watching the show, so you might not know why that was sick. Also, I just made uh, made myself some wings, barbecue wings, delicious, delicious barbecue wings. Um, <clears throat> but the whole of season one was basically Fate and Nanoha's arc to get to the point in the final episode where Fate is freed from her abusive mother and able to make a friend for the first time. And so fate showing up and being like, and then the 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 bad guy being like, oh, you brought allies? And then she's like, no. Friends. Goes incredibly fucking hard. 
And it's also just the facial expressions and the animation and the music swelling and the voice acting. It just creates a perfect fucking moment. Fate is... I keep saying fate. I keep calling the show fate. It's not fate. Fate is a completely different anime. Fate is just a character in this anime. And it confuses me. It confuses me a lot. Nanoha, the show, is very good anime. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was I, I I was talking about how I have so many dropped shows on my mouth earlier. And I think like there is a reason for this. It's not just that I hate anime <laughs> and drop so much shit. Like it's definitely being inflated by the fact that I continuously do the thing where I watch the first episode of every anime in a season, and then every time I mark it as one episode watched and dropped, that's definitely inflating that, because I've done that a whole bunch of times. But I still do drop more shows, way more shows than I think most people do. Uh, I'm a very I'm a very mood-based guy. <laughs> I'm, a, I, I'm a bipolar guy, you know? Like... I get into a manic state and I can watch, like, I mean, I have very fond memories of this time when I was in a hypomanic episode and I was watching three entire anime a day, just back to back to back for like three days in a row. That was, that was a crazy time, but I can't just whip that out of nowhere. It requires a very particular state of mania. The same thing that let me make a video game in like five days. Like, a very particular hyper-focused mania that I, I... If I could just tap into that at will, I would be the most powerful human being alive. It does leave me fucking exhausted. It's like a fucking superpower. <laughs> I run out of mana at the end of it. But, like, if I could just tap into that at will, I'd be able to do anything for about four days. And then I'd die. <laughs> but I cannot tap into it whenever I want. But, you know, that's a, that's a powerful, I could, like, sometimes that happens to me, is what I'm saying, where, where sometimes I just develop a, a mania hyper focus that I, that lasts for a few days, um, and I can just crank shit out. It happened, I think I can maybe force myself into it. I think I kind of did that with Strike Witches. So I'm trying to do with this. I keep getting distracted by Team Fortress 2. Um, I mean, I'm not getting that distracted by it, but, you know, I, I think I would it would also be much easier to watch anime if I could, like, fiddle with something. I mean, like, you can see me. I, fi I fiddle with with Beglary constantly. Oops, and I just dropped it. I fiddle with, with this Beglary constantly. I, like, I'm, I'm big into to fiddling. I'm fidgeting, but I need something uh, like it would be nice if there was somehow something I could do that was even more stimulating than this, but didn't require me to look at it, you know. So I could still, I don't know, that such a thing doesn't exist. <laughs> you can't, I, you can't do that. You still, I mean, the answer is learn Japanese, so you don't have to constantly look over to read subs. Uh, I'm working on it, I'm not working on it. I'm not working on it very hard, though. I'm not working on it very hard at all. Saying I'm working on it is kind of a lie, actually. That would be me lying. If I said, if someone said, are you learning Japanese? And I said, I'm working on it. That would be a lie. I would be lying. <laughs> that would be a situation in which I was telling a fib, a little porcupine. Uh, I think it's time for me to admit that this kind of show is kind of my shit. And frankly, I've been underrating the appeal of this particular kind of show to me. And what I mean by that is the action moe shows. Nanoha is obviously one of the best examples, uh, but there are a bunch of shows like this that I really like. It's kind of related to the Mecha Musume genre. Um, big fan of Strike Witches. Big fan of Vivid Red Operation. Uh, you know, there's a there's a few. <laughs> I tried to think of another one and it didn't come to me. There's definitely others though. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Fuck. Uh, what's uh, what's another? What's another one? What's another one? 
there's there's got there's I don't know, but Simpho Gear I haven't I haven't really watched, so I I don't know if I if I like Simpho Gear, but uh, yeah, I'm looking through a list called Simpho Gear esque shows. Um, Tengen Topper Gurren Lagan is that a Simpho Gear s esque show? I don't know. I I haven't seen Simpho Gear so. So I don't know, but that sounds a bit odd to me. Um, anyway, yeah, action. But what I'm saying is, if I'm into this, if I'm into this, then I should probably watch Simpho Gear, first of all. And secondly, I should probably watch Prekyo. Uh Like, if, if if this is my... I mean, there's there's a few shows in this genre I've been meaning to watch. Like... I want to rewatch Vivid Red Operation because I really enjoyed it and it stuck with me. And for some reason, I, I don't know, I kind of want to rewatch it to see if I it might become one of my favorites. I don't know, because I'm still, like, lots of shows I enjoy, but then I forget about them immediately after. Or, like, not that I forget about them, but I don't find myself regularly thinking about them. Um... But Vivid Red Operation is stuck in my mind, and normally that means there's something special about it, so that kind of makes me want to go back and revisit it. Um, but another show is Sky Girls. That's a that's by the same guy that made Strike Witches, and another show I've been meaning to to watch. I I I never, you know, I watched almost all of Strike Witches, the Strike Witches franchise, but I never watched. Uh, there, there's, there's like these specials that I, that I didn't watch, and I should probably also go watch them, go back and watch those. I, I think they're like more slice of life oriented. Speaking of slice of life oriented, the slice of life stuff in A's, significant step up from the slice of life stuff in season one. Significant step up. Uh, the sort of, I think it's just because fate is like a character now. <laughs> fate can be part of the main group. And the dynamic between Fate and Naroha is just, you know, amazing. And and Fate herself is such an interesting character. It just, I don't know, it makes it makes it much better. It makes it much much more interesting to watch the, the just sort of slice of life thing. And the same with the the other group, the the knights, the the the, the bad guys who, uh, as I'm told, I mean, I don't know, what I'm saying as I'm told. The bad guys who aren't, they don't seem to be bad. They don't seem to be evil. Uh, so calling them the bad guys is kind of kind of, a, kind of strange. But the, the other team, the other side, the guys that they're fighting, the knights, the, the thingy knights, I forgot what the word, what, what they call them. Uh, you know, they, they sort of slice of life around with the girl in the wheelchair. And that's pretty, that's pretty chill stuff as well. But then they also have these, these cool ass fights with the weapons that have like cartridges like a, and, and like shotgun cartridges fucking sick um yeah i don't know it's good, cool anime that's like the third time i've ended a ended a segment by saying good anime um it's hyper shit uh i, w- I also want to point out how good the character designs are in fate I think some people would consider them to be like over designed, but for me they're, they're they're just right. They got the two thousands flair that that obviously I really like, the two thousands moe type of, of of eyes and, and and hair, inspired by a lot of like the classic visual novels of the time. Um, I don't know. It's it's a good it's a good aesthetic. It's a, it's a great aesthetic. Has a, this sh- whole show has a great aesthetic. Um. I, there was one more thing I wanted to say. I think I was just sort of going going back to this. I don't know what it's it's not it's not necessarily girls with guns. It's not necessarily um, Maka Musume, although it's related to those two genres. It's it's kind of a maybe you could just call it that. Maybe action magical girl, action moe. I don't know what you want to call it, but those kinds of shows. You know, they kind of don't exist anymore, right? They, they don't get made anymore. I, that's not necessarily true. Maybe it's true. I'm trying to think. 
it might it might be possible that they exist and i just don't know about them i'm trying to think if like licorice recoil counts as something like that maybe maybe they do exist to some extent they're still making anime i just clicked on mal there's a whole new season there's a new season of konosuba what the fuck there's a new season of slime isekai no one told me this there's a new season of Date Alive? What the fuck? I knew about the new season of Uticam. There's a new season of Hibiki Euphonium? What the fuck? No one told me this. What the hell? What else is going on? What else have they got going on here that no one's talking There's a new season of Bartender? What the fuck? <laughs> Bartender? The show that only I've seen? What the hell? Why is there a new... I mean, Bartender is kind of sick. This is actually a new season of... Oh, it's just a different adaptation of the... A different, a different adaptation, not a sequel. The original Bartender anime is actually sick. Uh, so I don't know if you... I don't know, I'm, I don't know if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch the new season of Bartender. What the fuck? That's fucking crazy. A new adaptation of Bartender? I did not expect that. That's, that's, that could be kind of hype. I hope people watch that, cause uh, and I hope it's good, because the original series is something very unique. Uh, a bunch of isekai shit. Some of these look okay, though. As a reincarnated aristocrat, I'll use my appraisal skill to rise in the world. I mean, these are the all things I'd watch. These these are things that, like, I, 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 I'm not going to watch them weekly, though, I feel like, you know? Like, I need to... Is this a new season of One Room? Am I Am I crazy? Oh no, this is just a, another anime that has one room in the title. What else? Girls Band Cry. Guy, Bocce the Rock did really well. <laughs> um, Henjin no Salad Bowl. Impoverished Detective. I mean, some, yeah, you know, this is a weird ass. Oh yeah, Shumatsu Train Doko e Iku. That's, um, this is going to be probably anime of the year. It's like a uh, fucking, some sort of slice of life show, I think. It looks like a slice of life show. About cute girls doing trains. I don't know, but it looks amazing. Uh, I don't know if it actually looks amazing, but it looks, I'll definitely check it out. I'll tell you that much. Um, damn, we got distracted talking about seasonal anime. There's actually quite a lot of interesting shit this season. A lot of it's sequels, though, unfortunately. Um, what's this? I was reincarnated as the seventh prince, so I can take my time perfecting my magical ability. Is this a Shotokan? This looks like a Shotokan anime. That, that fucking... Yeah. This is some Shota shit. Uh... A lot of these just have like the most generic names. Uh, this looks like Kill la Kill. Sentai. Oh no, this is. Is this. Is this fucking. I don't know what this is. It has the same aesthetic as Kill la Kill though, for some reason. Uh, a new season of Black Butler? What the fuck is. Ha I don't. What is happening? Why are there so many goddamn sequels? Mahoka? Is this a new season of Mahoka? What is happening? Why is all these season threes? What the fuck? And no, no game, no life. They're doing season three of everything except no game. What the fuck? We got season three of Slime Isekai, season three of Konosuba, season three of uh, Mahoka, season five of Date Alive, season two, part two of Mucho Kotense, season three of Eurocamp. Season 3 of Hibiki. This is the year of the season 3s. What the hell is going on? This is so many season 3s. This is the season of 3s. This is crazy. Am I am I going insane? It's all 3s. It's all 3s. Right, let's get back to Nanoha. Who cares about currently airing anime? We're talking about anime from 2005. Good show. So I just finished Nanoha A's, and frankly, I haven't had any time to put my thoughts together about it. I'm a little, little muddled about it. I feel a little, I feel very 
pushed and also simultaneously pulled. On the one hand, like just like season one, there are parts, the highs are incredibly high. Uh, but rather than being pulled down by certain repetitive aspects like season one was, or taking a while to get going, Nano A's is quite consistent all the way through, and it does have some real peaks. But there's also something I don't like about it, and I'm trying to put my finger on what it is. And I think what it is is that it loses. I mean, even by halfway through season two of the first, oh, sorry, halfway through uh, season one, um, you know, we were already kind of forgetting it and dropping the idea that this was ever supposed to be a magical girl show. And season two does away with the concept that this is a magical girl show in all but the title, right? And it loses something particular to me, I feel like. It turns into much more of a straight on sci-fi battle anime. And that's not necessarily bad. It it's good. It's a good it's actually really good. <laughs> not only not only is it good, it's actually really good. Like the fights, really good. The character designs top notch. The weapon designs top notch. The soundtrack, great. It, it, the, the and the, the storyline, the plot line, the plot, you know, it has some faults. It's not perfect, but you know, it, it also a little repetitive in the middle. Uh but like generally speaking, pretty good. It has some flaws. It has some stuff that doesn't quite like. For example, there's a really big emotional right at the end. Right at the end, spoilers. There's a really big emotional send off of a character. Let's just say that to avoid spoilers too 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 much. Uh, really big emotional send off of a, of a particular character. Except that that character barely existed <laughs> for like one episode, and yet they spend like a good five minutes just bawling their eyes out that this character is gonna like die and disappear. It's like who fucking gives a shit? <laughs> she she was she was I don't. Or she showed up as like an evil person and then was like for like in the episode and then had like one episode. To be redeemed, and then all of a sudden it's, it's played like it's a super high emotion drama thing. And I don't know, I don't think it warranted all of that soundtrack, piano, you know, sad, crying, I don't know. And then she doesn't even really die. Like, anyway. There's, there's, it goes a little hard into the melodrama. Which, if you know me, you know I'm not, like, super into the very heavy melodrama stuff. Um, but I'm spending my time poking holes in it because I'm trying to figure out why this isn't the best anime of all time. <laughs> like, it's because it's there's certain parts of it where I'm like, yeah, that's the fucking best show I've ever seen. Uh, like, it's the only thing I can think to compare it to, the only other anime I can think to compare it to is, like, Evangelion towards the end like it's clearly you know inspired by Evangelion episodes 25 and 26 uh and it does it does it justice it, the, doing that kind of storyline uh it does it well but yeah there is there is like it it doesn't have you know, the scale is just universe destroying, multiverse destroy. Everything's huge. Everything's the most important thing to ever happen. Everything's solved by the power of love, which is cool. The power of friendship uh, in the form of gigantic laser beam attacks, which is par for the course for Nanoha and great. But, you know, there's also frustrating elements to it. Like, you know, really a lot of the tension of the show is happening just like in season one, because the bad guys just refuse to talk. It, like, at any point, they could just use one ounce of their brain and be like, you know what? Let me hear you out for one second before I start fighting you. Or why don't we, you know, this is an anime. 
why don't we talk while we're fighting, like every other anime, and like they do when they finally do talk? I don't know. That's kind of an annoying way to move the plot forwards. But, you know, I am shitting on it, but also it is really good. <laughs> like, I'm I'm basically, I'm poking holes because, yeah, I, like, I think there's, uh, I don't know, it's it's just, like, it doesn't quite, it, it's, it doesn't quite connect with me in a particular way, and I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what that is. It's, it's not that I disliked it. Like, I would still give this show, like, a really strong seven, at minimum. You know, like, it might, it, it, it might even, it might be an eight. It might be an eight. It, you know, it probably is an eight. But, like, why is it not a ten? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, there's, it's, it's something about the tone. It's something about the, the way it just goes all in on the, the, the battle elements and the, the melodrama elements that just loses me. Like, those, those aren't my thing. It's not that they're done badly. They're done really well. That's, that's what it is. That's what I, there we go. I think we figured it out. It's not that the show is done badly, it's just that it goes in a direction that is like very slightly different to what I want, which is like the battle scenes are fucking sick. But like am I I'm not like a battle anime guy. <laughs> That's not super my thing. It's I'm not against it. I like them, but it's not like I don't know. That's that, that's not really. It's more the melodrama that that like, I'm I'm kind of an anti melodrama guy. Like you have to make it really good, and justify it really well for me to give you a pass. Like you have to have really spent a lot of time building up these characters to make me care about them if you're gonna pull some melodrama. And sometimes I think Nanoha does that well, really well, and sometimes I think it doesn't do it well uh, and it just tries to let the drama stand for itself and it I'm not someone for whom that works uh, I just feel really weird about the show because <laughs> like yeah it was great but also it wasn't incredible it it wasn't quite it, it, I, I'm watching it and I'm like to to someone, this is to a bunch of people. This is a ten out of ten. To a me, in a very different like it like someone uh, a butterfly flaps its wings slightly different in the the Himalayas one day, and then the the no thank you in that universe. This is his favorite anime. That's what I'm saying, right? Like it's just and it's not the show. It's me. It's like my very my particular tastes like just about scrape past this show in terms of like. The melodrama and in terms of the 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 focus on I mean it basically turns into a shonen anime. <laughs> like the you know what I mean? Like maybe not shonen, maybe that's take that's that's not really accurate, but you know, uh, uh whatever, whatever, battle battle type anime. Uh you know, I've I I've watched quite a few of them. Similar type of things, kind of similar type of things, like urban fantasy, sci-fi-esque, battle-esque, almost light novel-esque before they were all isekai. Like, I, you know, and I have to give it credit because it comes before that wave. Like, Nanoha probably inspired a lot of those shows. Um, and it does it well. <laughs> Like, I'm not complaining about the quality of those parts. I'm purely talking about taste. But at the same time, like, there was a lot of it that worked for me. Like, a lot of, you know, to get me to be really engaged with, a, like, with these sorts of, of battles, you have to do it well. And I was engaged. Like, they were genuinely good. And there were, there were interesting twists and turns in the plot that, really kept me hooked 
and wanting to watch more, you know, it's a good show. <laughs> it's a. I kept saying it while I was. Yeah, I kept recording little segments and ending them all with "It's a good anime." Cause it is a good anime. There's there's a few things. I don't know, man. There's there's a whole bunch of really good shit. Let's just put, get it out there. Like that's that's. I'm just kind of in a very muddled frame of mind right now because I'm in this. I can see a version of myself where this is my favorite show ever. And I'm like, why isn't that me? I'm trying to figure this out. And it's, I don't know, it's really strange. It's a, it's a, a strange frame of mind. Uh, but I think, from what I've heard, it's very possible that not Strikers... Strikers is the next se- season. And Strikers has 26 episodes compared to the first two having 13 each. Uh, so that'll be tomorrow I watch that because it's getting a little late. Um, and I want to play some Team Fortress 2 today as well. Got to keep that grind up. Uh, but as I remember, not Strikers, but Vivid is more sort of slice of life oriented, I guess. Less or uh, maybe not. I don't know if it's slice of life oriented, but I've heard it's less melodrama oriented. Is basically what I'm getting at. Or at least that's the sense I get from like having read reviews and and, and you know, seeing bits and pieces about it. Uh, so I think, like, it's it's quite possible that that becomes my favorite part of the franchise, which will be interesting. Because I know most people consider A's to be the peak of the franchise. At least I think that's true. Um, and I completely understand why. Like, it, it's great. There's There's a lot of, like... It's one of those situations where the... The, the bad guys have, like, equally good motivation. I wish more anime did this. I wish more stories did this. Like, no one is morally in the right or in the wrong here. People are just trying their best, given their, their particular goals. And that puts pits them against each other. And in the end, they can reconcile through the power of friendship. <laughs> And that's what the fuck Nanoha is all about, man. Uh, and I, you know, I, I really like it. I think the the all of the cast of characters, you know, somehow despite introducing, I mean, at this point, Nanoha has a really big cast. By the end of season two, there's like 20 fucking people you got to keep track of. And yet all of them are interesting. Like all, every single character is multidimensional, fleshed out in some way, and has interesting emotional relationships with the other characters. Like, it's really well done. Yeah, I can't complain. And, you know? And yet it's not my favorite thing ever. The, I, I, like, I can't impress upon you enough how much the character designs are, like, influencing my love of this anime. Like, the character designs, the outfits, the hairstyles, uh, the, the big-ass fucking eyes. Look how big her eyes are, man. Look how fucking, you don't get, they don't make them this big anymore. This was a this was a 2005 special. They just stopped. They stopped making them this big anymore, right? Like that shit. It's so fucking peak. And when when like spoilers, spoiler. Uh, this is a fucking video about watching the whole anime. If you didn't come in here expecting spoilers, then you're an idiot. Uh, like when Hayate transforms into her like magical girl form towards the end. She has that fucking staff with like the crucifix on it and her outfit and and her like little hat. It's fucking peak character design. And then the, the attacks, so fucking sick. All of the beam attacks and the way the cartridge loading things work with the 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 devices where they ah oh man, it's so fucking genius. <laughs> Whoever came up with that shit, like what if we made the magical girl stuffs like a mecha shotgun? It's so genius. It is the sickest shit ever put to animation. Like, I, there's so much to love about this anime. But, at the same time, it's all doing it in service of creating, on the one hand, the, like, stuff I really like about, you know, uh, the 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 giant friendship beams 
And on the other hand, like the stuff that I don't like, like having a five minute part of your episode where everyone cries and the music is really sad because a character that we barely know is going to go away for a bit. Well, not go away for a bit, like die, but not really die. Eh? You know? I'm also a little disappointed in this. At the end of the end of the final episode, there's like an epilogue that is a time skip six years in the future. And in the time skip, Hayate is not in a wheelchair anymore. And I think that's lame. What's wrong with having a character who's in a wheelchair? I kind of liked the fact that this anime had a character that's in a wheelchair. It was just cool. It made it stand out. It made the anime stand out. It made her character unique. It was like, yeah, she doesn't, you know, just because she's in a wheelchair doesn't mean she's any less fucking sick than the other characters. I liked that aspect of it. I didn't think they were going to pull it because after the big final fight, she's still in a wheelchair, even though the, the big evil thing is destroyed. But they pulled it in the end. And I'm like, eh, it's kind of cheap. It feels cheap. Introduce a character in a wheelchair in a world with magical sci-fi stuff. And then, oh, the climax. Oh, she doesn't have to be in a wheelchair anymore. She can walk. Yeah, it feels like a cheap trick to me. Didn't like that. Uh, it's too easy. It's too much. It's too, it's too fucking easy to do that. It, it's not, I don't know. Yeah, it's cheap. But yeah, you know me. Like, I'm the Moe guy. I am the Moe guy. And I guess I just, you know, season one and some good chunks of season two have some strong Moe elements, but especially towards the end, or the, maybe just the second half, like, we've really abandoned Moe at this point. Like, there really is no Moe in this show, which is a shame. I mean, there's Moe in the show, actually. Let's get, like, but there's not, like, kawaii in the show. There is, like, a burning passion, but I don't really care about burning passion that much. I mean, I do sometimes, but, you know, I'm I'm not a Gurren Lagan type anime fan. Like, that's just not who I am. Uh, <clears throat> it's not to say it's bad if you are that type of guy. If you are, you will love Nanoha. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know how to feel. I'm I'm kind of emotionally lost. Uh, I loved all the characters' aged-up designs at the end. Nanaho with the big, long... What, is, what even is that? It's like a ponytail, but out the side of her head. Does that have a name? Uh, that? That was fucking sick. Um, I liked how they did, like, a little... They had little text boxes come up explaining what, what all the characters went on to do after the end of the anime. That was cool. That was fun. It's a fun show. But there's there's also a lot of like the the dream the fate dream sequence. Like that's a great that shit is fucking Kino. Like that playing back on the emotions of season one and really fleshing out Fate's perspective, it really fucking works. It really works. And like a lot of just the fights that don't go anywhere because the third they keep a third party keeps interjecting and stopping them from fighting, uh, just constantly happens in the show. Very annoying. Uh, but a lot of the fights, I mean, they're just sick. They're fucking sick. There's nothing else to it. They're just really cool. Yeah, I, I think it's 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 a good show. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep saying that. I'm, try I'm trying to think of more nuanced commentary, but I'm just kind of emotionally confused. It's uh, probably not going to end up on my top 10. Just, it didn't touch me that deeply. But it will definitely remain in my mind. I, I'm pretty sure I will not forget about the existence of Nanoha anytime soon and Nanoha Ace. I will not, I will, I will not, this will, this will be, this will become a reference point to me. I am fairly certain of it. Uh, because it is, 
it, it saying it's a type, it, it is a like epitome of a type of show. It is the progenitor of a type of show, you know. Uh, it's it it has a lot of Ava inspiration. Um, so anything else to add? Well, I guess we will uh, continue on to Vivid. And now I've I've seen the first episode of Vivid. I know I've seen like scattered bits of this anime. It's really weird. I've seen the first episode of Vivid, and from what I remember, the first episode they jump straight into the melodrama. Like they introduce two new characters out of nowhere and immediately go into melodrama with them. And when I as the reason that I never watched it because I was like, "Fuck that, <laughs> I hate that shit." And this was when I was like super anti melodrama. Now I have like more of a tolerance to that shit. I still don't actively seek it out, you know, but I I have more of a tolerance to dumb cheesy anime melodrama. But yeah, I guess we'll have to see. We'll have to hope that uh, it's not too heavy on that that side of things because that that is a uh, really something I don't. That's my least favorite thing in anime. Uh, that whole high school, well, it's not necessarily high school. High school melodrama is the worst kind because it doesn't even matter. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes people can pull it off. Like, there's there's shows that immediately jump in with the melodrama. What's that one fucking anime? I don't remember. There's this one anime where the main character is like a psychic or something. And it just starts off the bat with, it's kind of like the first, you know, it, uh, like the movie... Pixar up, how it like starts with a really sad bit that's really short that like fucks you up to prepare you for a whimsical movie. It, there's the anime version of that. I don't remember the name of it, but yeah, it just opens with this like the depressing ass story of her life, where like her entire life has been fucked up by having these psychic powers and like her parents abandoning her and shit. It's crazy. That's a good. That's a good anime. The rest of the show's good as well, but the rest of the show's kind of like whimsical comedy stuff, romance stuff, you know? I don't know why I'm, I brought that up. But, I, oh yeah, because, see, like, melodrama can be done well in a situation like that. You just have to, you have to buy, buy into it. Or, um, there's some parts towards the end of, like, Chivalry of a Failed Night, which are very melodramatic, but they go all in on it. Like, they, they, Firstly, I don't know, they, they like, fucking desaturate the color palette and do all these weird directing tricks. I will say, the directing in A's is a step down from the first season, because it's no longer Aki Shimbo directing it. It's still good, but it doesn't have the same, it doesn't have a voice, like, the same level of, of, of voice that certain parts of the first season of that offer had, which is also kind of a shame. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll get back to you tomorrow when I watch Vivid. And uh, I hope it's not as bad as I'm worried that it's going to be. Or not necessarily bad, but I hope it's not as outside of my personal taste window as I'm worried it's going to be. Uh it's interesting that they went all in on the battle anime stuff because, like, for a show with Maho Shoujo in its title and that is so, like, built on the foundations of the magical, magical girl genre, it's crazy how much they completely abandon any idea that it is that. <laughs> like, it is just not a mad Calling Nano... Like, when I made my Otaku-oriented Madrigal girl chart list thing... I only put Nanoha season one on it because I I had a vague notion that season two like didn't have that much of a magical girl element to it. And I was so fucking right. Like I should not I definitely shouldn't put Nanoha A's on that Otaku into Magical Girl list because it is not a magical girl show. Calling Nanoha A's a magical girl show would be incorrect. It is a sci-fi action battle show. It has nothing to do like the it, the only thing it takes from magical girl is there are like two transformation sequences in the whole show like that's it uh 
and there are girls who are magical. <laughs> but they're not even really magical because it's sci-fi science stuff. It's not even really magic. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that means, but it's that's something. All right, I'm going to go play TF2 with Osaka Syndrome now. Okay, it's day three. Oh, this camera's a little... Did that make it better or worse? I don't know. But it's day three, and we gotta we got to get through Vivid, which is twice as long as the previous seasons. I've watched 20... It's, been a, it's actually been a long time since I've watched a 26-episode show in a day. Uh, so... <laughs> Wish me luck, I suppose. Uh, where is it? Vivid. This is what I want, right? No, no, Strikers. Not Vivid. Vivid is the next one. Strikers is season three. Um, I also wanted to give a brief note. You know, I said for season one and two, they had pacing issues, uh, especially season one. But I was thinking... I don't really know what pacing is. <laughs> Does anyone really know what pacing is? Like, it's obviously something to do with the rate at which things happen. Like, I can tell you, I can tell you when pacing goes wrong. I can tell you things with good pacing. Like, I think, let me see. The movie Good Trouble in Little China? Is, no, Big Trouble, <laughs> Good Trouble. Big Trouble in Little China? That's great. It's a good movie with great pacing. Or, uh... It's not just fast, because that's a really fast-paced movie. Like, uh, Lawrence of Arabia, my favorite film. That has great pacing. It knows when to... It's like it knows when to linger, and it knows when to speed things up. It knows when to slow things down. I think that's... Is that what pacing is? Maybe. Maybe that's what pacing is. The anime was just weirdly paced until fairly recently. All TV was kind of weirdly paced until fairly recently. Um... I think they kind of figured it out in, like, America in, like, the 90s. And then it took a little while to make its way over to Japan. And then to make its way over to... Anna. I mean, they still haven't figured out pacing and J-dramas. The, uh, they're just still doing the same thing. But, uh, yeah, I think it, it took until, like, uh, a, little, a little bit further into the 2000s than, than we're currently at for, for anime to figure out pacing. Why one of the reasons I don't really like old anime that much compared to other people, like stuff from the eighties and nineties. Uh, I I don't think they really figured out how to pace an anime properly until like two thousand six, two thousand seven. Uh, so we're like just on the fucking bridge. Uh, anyway, let's let's without further ado start watching uh Mao Shoujo Lyrical Nanoha Vivid. Nope, we're watching now. <laughs> I'll show you a lyrical that on Strikers. That's the anime I'm watching. Uh, right off the bat, in episode one, Manoha, who looks fucking sick, aged up, by the way. Very cool character. I mean, this show, peak character designs all around, obviously. Um, just right off the bat, in her introduction, and I understand, like, from a fan service perspective, perspective, I understand it, that they, she uses her divine buster attack to, like, break through a, uh, the roof of a building and rescue a little girl. Like, a burning building. But Divine Buster is, like, her most powerful attack. She doesn't need to do that. Like, she could shoot through the roof of a building with fucking nothing, with her little finger. There's no reason for her to pull out fucking cartridge-loaded Divine Buster. Like, you set up the power scaling in this anime. You don't have to break it. I, I, I've just watched it. I know the power- I know the attacks. You don't have to pull out fucking... That's kind of insane. It's like... I don't know. I don't know other anime with power scaling. It's like Goku going fucking level 5 Super Saiyan or something to rescue a cat out of a tree. Like, it just doesn't need to happen. Okay, so... A couple things to note here. Firstly, I slept all fucked up last night. I, like, overslept. I slept, like, ten and a half hours. Ow, what the fuck? Something just went in my eye. Fuck. What the hell? Okay, we're fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I overslept, so I feel like shit. I feel like absolute fucking garbage today. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is... Um, 
I'm really not a fan of this style of characterization that they're doing in episode one. Uh, it feels extremely ham-fisted and rushed. But I'm going to choose, and this is something that you can just do, okay? Many people don't realize this. I didn't realize this until uh, like two years ago. You can just choose to meet a show where it's at, uh, which is what I'm going to do. So I would normally not like a show like this, but I'm going to decide to play along and give the show the benefit of the doubt in the hopes that it's using this to get to something that I actually like. And so I'm just going to choose to change my tastes. You can actually do this. You can fake it till you make it with liking things. Most people don't understand that you can do this. You, you occasionally have to uh, accept that the normal default you wouldn't buy into it and make an effort for a show. And this doesn't just go for anime. This goes for, for every art, every, every piece of art. And I, I normally, you know, well, okay, let's maybe not get into that side of things or we'll be here for 10 years. Um, but yeah, I do not like the style of, of ham-fisted characterization that they do at the beginning of, of episode one to introduce these two characters. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to allow it and I'm just going to pretend that I'm someone who can, who can jive with that. And... Uh, yeah, see where that takes me. And then finally, the, the the whole magic system in this show is kind of fucked. Like, I don't know if they know they're dealing with autists here who will notice these things. Why are the characters talking out loud to each other that are far away from each other? Tia and I don't remember the other girl's name. The, the, the two new girls that have been introduced doing the, this, like, test thing to get into the Time Space Administration Bureau, I'm assuming. The whole thing in Nanoha is that when you're a mage, you can talk psychically in your head through tele telekinesis or whatever the fuck it's called, right? And that's how they communicate over long distances. And that's been the case for the first two seasons. And then, so it's, that explains how characters can be having conversations in the middle of a battle when they're far away from each other. Great. Fine. Completely reasonable uh, thing I can buy into. So why are the characters now talking out loud as if they have like an earpiece in or something when they're both mages they can communicate psychically but the whole point of psychic communication is that you don't speak it out loud it just happens in your head and there's an echo effect there's a delay effect on the the sound that you know that that's what ha what's happening in this situation they're just talking out loud as if they have like magic marvel earpiece you know like all those superhero movies and similar similar kinds of things i i think there's, I don't, I don't know what review it, there's a review of the movie Now You See Me, oh yeah, it's the video with the, with the magicians in Now You See Me Wizards by someone, I forgot that, that, that YouTuber's name, but at one point in his, in that video, he's like, the characters are talking to each other as if they have like earpieces in, right, they're communicating, but they don't have earpieces in, like, you can see. Like, how are they talking to each other? It doesn't make any sense. It's the same shit. Why are they just talking out loud as if they have, like, a walkie-talkie or some some earpiece or something when they're fucking... The whole point, it's been demonstrated very early on that all mages can psychically communicate and it's been shown very clearly for two seasons of a show exactly what that looks like which is they don't move their mouth and speak out loud. They just talk in their head and to signal to the audience that that's what's happening, the audio has like a delay effect on it and they're just not doing it. So how, what's happening? I don't know what's going on with the consistency of the magic in the show relating to the first two seasons. Like now you have a flashback sequence where fate is like, I'm en route to the location. I'm going to be a spot like they're like, you need to be here faster. We need you here right now. And then Fate's like, I'm flying there as fast as I fucking can. I'm just going to there. En route, two minutes. Right. They can teleport. <laughs> it's been demonstrated so many times that they can teleport. Why does like, what's going on? Why, why is the show like this all of a sudden? It was so consistent for the first two seasons. And it's built up a, a magic system that makes sense with rules. And now it's just making shit up, I guess. What the hell is going on? So Nanoha, Fate, and Hayate all sleep in their underwear 
together in one giant bed, there was a, a polycule, right? <laughs> like, this is a canonical lesbian polycule. I gotta give it base credits for that. I, I gotta say, okay, I've been shitting on on some of the stuff, but watching Nara Hofei and Hayate, it all grown up, matured with the the their being cool guys. That shit's sick. Okay, like let's not pretend that it's not the sickest shit of all time. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking great. Okay, let's not pretend that the like look. Well, having watched this characters. This char- I was going to say this character, and then halfway through realized I'm talking about multiple people. Watching these characters having grown, you know, for th- through all of the stuff that happened in the first and second seasons, and then reach their, you know, now seeing them as adults in the Bureau, doing all this cool-ass shit, being powerful guys, that shit's fucking sick. We love to see it. It's fan servicey bullshit, but I'm a fan. I'm happy to be serviced. There's, I've got another question though regarding just world building stuff. So the bureau in season one was sort of just one ship, right? It was clear that we were just seeing like a small part of this larger organization, and that they were like one little, you know, spaceship thing, and they specifically went around in the spaces between dimensions, you know, helping people out. And then in season two, we get to see what is presumably one of the Bureau's main bases. And it's a giant Deep Space Nine looking ass space station, which also exists in this like gap between dimensions type place. It's in space. It has Star Wars hangar things. You know, in Star Wars, like the big bases in Star Wars, they have like a big rectangle that all the ships fly in and out of. Like it has that. It's and it's in it's specifically in this place. Where are they now? <laughs> they are just on a planet in a building. What happened? Like where what planet? You know what I'm saying? Like where where actually are we in this show? I maybe I just missed something. It's quite possible that I just missed something. Cause you know that like Maybe text flashed up on screen that I didn't read while I was reading subtitles or something. But it's just, there's all these weird inconsistencies with the world building that was set up in the first two seasons. I guess some of it, you could argue, this is set, you know, a good few years in the future. Everyone's grown up now. uh, And things might have changed. I can give it a pass for some of this stuff. And there's also probably stuff we didn't see in the first two seasons, which might be what this is. It's just a little odd. This is just a little odd. But, yeah, so far, not a big fan of the two new characters. Not not the biggest fan. Uh, but seeing Fate, Namaha, and Hayate all grown up being doing, doing girl boss shit is fucking good that's 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 good shit they're doing it they just as i stopped and pressed play they're doing the the psychic telepathic communication thing so why weren't they doing this when they were doing this earlier what it's odd it's odd and unusual that they wouldn't think this through but i'm not gonna stop every time i notice a tiny inconsistency because let's just stop doing this I'm about, what am I, halfway through episode 5 of Strikers? I'm going to be honest with you. I do not like this show very much. <laughs> we're, we're past the three episode test now. I do, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of, of this, this anime. As much as, like, the other ones had problems, this one, the problems are much more fundamental. In terms of stuff I just don't like. In the previous seasons, you know, I made comments about how it had really gotten away from any idea that this was ever supposed to be a magical girl show, but it still had certain aesthetic hang-ups that were relics, vestigial elements of when it was once a magical girl show. They've com- they've just done away, like, they don't even have staffs anymore, like, the, the magical girl staff, 
thing. The new characters, they don't even have that. Like, they just have, like, watches and little, like, gadgets. Like, it, it's the uh, calling this Maho Shoujo anything is just kind of insane to me. Uh, but then the real issue beyond surface level aesthetics is that the new characters just suck. What are their names? Tio and Subaru? Uh, they're just not as interesting as any of the... Like, the, the new cast is just not as interesting as Nanaha and Fate's relationship in Season 1, or the, uh, you know, the Knights in, in Season 2, the, with the Book of Darkness type. That, that whole dynamic of that whole group, and uh, it's... it's it's th these new characters, the four new characters. What is there? Subaru, Erio, Tiana, who they call Tio, and Karo. I mean, two of them are just not even characters. Two of them have no character. Like, I don't know what they do. I don't know who they are. I don't know anything about their characterization. Like, they're just kind of there. And then the other two who are, like, the even more main, main characters are just... Their, their powers are boring. Their their fighting styles are... You know, we, we're no longer in the realm of, of cool-ass magical girl beam attacks and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now we've just jumped ship into light novel bullshit. <laughs> Shonen side, calling it light novel bullshit is actually wrong. It's like uh, Shonen uh, bad guy who shows up for one part of a tournament arc with a unique power and then is never mentioned again. Like, that's the power. Like, you know that kind of guy? Guy who shows up in the middle of a tournament arc to be like a mid boss and has like some particular unique, some particular unique little thing. Uh, aha, I I use roller skates to skate around and I create little fucking roller skate pathways in the air for me to skate on and attack you. Like, little little gimmick powers like that, except that's all they have. Which is, like, there's nothing inherently wrong with gimmick powers like that. You know, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Kyokai Senjo no Horizon, and that's full of characters like that. But those, firstly, that story is actually interesting. Uh, and that's the main thing. Like that, that story actually has really absurdly in-depth world building, and it's consistent. Uh, and it also has a giant cast. Shut the fuck up, phone. It also has a gigantic cast, and it's shit is constantly happening. It's an insanely fast-paced anime. Uh, all to kind of make up for that fact, you know. There's like. Yeah, each of the characters kind of has a gimmick power, but that's because there's 50 fucking characters. <laughs> In this show, the two main characters, they're just lame. Like, they just don't have the coolness of the Magical Girl Beam Attacks. Magical Girl Beam Attacks are cool. These characters, oh, what's my, what's my attack? It's a fucking gun. <laughs> it's a, guys, it's a gun. Come on. Do something a little more interesting than that. But, you know, even... So the characterization... And then just as people, they are they are, they are are boring. They are uninteresting. They don't have interesting motivations and struggles. They're just generic nothingness. And beyond that, even, like, the storyline, at least so far, we haven't gone that far into it, but it's really not grabbing... There's nothing hooking me into it. There's nothing... That I'm so far at least there's not been any particular tension or stakes. I mean yeah, we're still early on in the show, but you could start introducing something, <laughs> some sort of stakes for anyone that I care about. And there are so few like the characters that I actually do care about, Nanaha and Fate and, and Hayate and, and all of the, the knights and, and and so on are just relegated to the supporting cast. And it's cool as shit watching them be powerful and and uh, you know be the the new old guard. But you don't get to do that because you're spending the whole time with these fucking nothing nothing burgers of of characters 
training under them who are just I don't know they just don't they just do nothing for me they just this is a this is a bad sequel this is yeah that I'm just gonna say it right now they I don't know this girl's cool I will say out of all of them Carol Dudoshe she's the best of the new cast she has a like a really good cat like that's the other thing character design wise she's the only one with a good character design she has an interesting like power um yeah now i know that vivio is in this se- season and vivio is based as a char- like character design wise so I'm sort of just waiting until Vivio shows up. Don't know how the fuck that's going to happen. Um, but yeah. It's a, it's a weird, weird, it's a very strange show as well. But it's, I don't know, it's gone. This is, this is. I'm going to watch the whole thing. But this is not like something like you know, I don't know how to explain it. There's there's a subtle difference between it's not even that subtle. There's there's a distinction between like at this point, this is no longer like a Mecha Musume type of show, like or anything in that kind of action magical girl Mecha Musume girls with guns it's not it's not any of that anymore like this is just a battle anime a sci-fi battle anime it has it has no it's not even got the sort of urban fantasy parts that nanoha had because we're just on an alien super futuristic sci-fi planet now like it's just kind of slop (laughs) I, i i can hope it gets better i guess but it's pretty hard for me to be invested in so far. Why won't let me? F- they keep doing this. Why are they bothering to whisper to each other? They're psychic. They can they can talk to each other in their brains from anywhere in the world. Why? Frankly, <laughs> I have completely stopped caring about this fucking anime, and it is quite hard to focus on. It is taken, I don't know if you can tell that it's dark, but it, I have, it like, it has taken me basically all day to watch 10 or so episodes of this show, because I am just fucking bored, and I keep just doing other shit to distract myself from this show. Um, it's just like this, because it, it's just kind of boring. And it's not helped by the fact that I know that I'm not even halfway through it. So it's kind of like, you know, if you look at my mouth, I have watched far more. I mean, this makes sense just from a time perspective. But even if you account for that, I've watched way more, uh, you know, half length, 12 episode or 13 episode shows than I have 26 episode shows. Just because... It's a, I'm a, I don't know. I don't know just how I am. I'm, I'm good at short bursts in, in everything. I, I'm, uh, I'm good at short bursts. I'm not of high intensity. I'm not good at sustained effort, which is, I'm, you know, you might think it's, it's, it's not a very big deal to, uh, oh, you didn't finish this show in a day. Who cares? But I'm worried the longer this takes watching Nanoha, um, a series which is is cool, but uh, especially post A's, not my favorite thing in the world. Um, like I wouldn't necessarily say I like this show a lot <laughs> so far, but it has a lot of time to redeem itself. Uh, but you know we're still, you can tell we're in the build up phase. This show takes full advantage of its longer runtime. Uh, it is like taking its time doing doing training arcs and uh, and so on rather than 
I mean, the main villain has showed up twice so far, I think. Uh, just to put it into perspective, in A's by episode 10, we were already in the final battle. <laughs> so, you know, that's just a difference. Uh, but yeah, I'm concerned about... Uh, that if I if I don't just like blast through this whole se series, I'll never finish it. I'll never actually finish all of Nanoha. So if I don't blast through it all in this this particular laying around watching project, but I think we'll be fine. Uh, as long as I can just, I don't know. I don't think I don't think I physically have time to finish this whole show today now because I've spent so long. So long on it. I kind of just want to be doing, I want to be playing video games or, or watching YouTube or something. There are, there are, and there were times when I was watching season one and watching A's where I thought the same thing. But this one doesn't have the fundamentals to come back on of me caring about the characters. It's quite hard to watch an anime where you don't care about the characters at all. Except for the side characters, I guess. Like, when Nanoha and Fate and, you know, Hayate and, and, and all of them show up, I'm like, yeah, yeah I this it, it gives me a little, little burst, a little speed boost, a little Mario Kart booster pad to keep watching. And then I just have to grind through all the shit with these new characters. That, I mean, I think... Uh, Carol and the, the, the kid with red hair, I forgot his name, and the, the Ben 10 Omni, the guy that looks like he stepped straight out of Yu-Gi-Oh! into this show, um, or like Card Fight Vanguard, he looks like a, or a Digimon, he looks like a Digimon character, that's what he looks like. That guy? Like, those two, they have an interesting dynamic, they're better characters than the main two. Um, but it's still kind of lame. It's still kind of lame. I don't know. Man, just when the show was about to do something interesting, the bad guy's just about to blow up a helicopter with a bunch of people on board and the, the MacGuffin. Just about, the bad guys were just about to, to, to win a battle. By distracting the main, I mean, it was a cool setup. It was smart. Distract the main group, and then uh, when they, tr you know, have a sniper uh, slash rocket launcher sniper thing, launch a thing and destroy the magic rock magic RPG and destroy the helicopter that's carrying the MacGuffin. It was like a good setup. It was all going to make sense, and it was all going to be a big lowest point tragic thing but no the next episode starts and nanoha is like i got here just in time to block the bullet to protect the helicopter fucking stupid bullshit man i mean sure fine cool it's fun to watch nanoha fight i like watching nanoha and fate do cool shit but also as a storyline it would have been better to see the characters like actually fail in a big way that would have been that would have been nice Characters have only had, like, minor slip-ups that have been resolved really quickly. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I don't give a shit about any of them. Uh, to be fair, you know... I, I mean, also, Nanoha lost to Fate multiple times in the original series. And A's starts with all of them losing a battle. I mean, this show just hasn't done that. Every time characters have fucked up, it's just turned out okay anyway. They've never, no, as far as I can remember so far, no one's taken an actual L. I mean, maybe this battle will turn out to be a loss for them anyway. But it looks like this is the, oh, they're turning it around because Nanoha and Fate showed up and they're just OP as shit and can kill anyone. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit stupid. I need to, I don't know. I feel stupid for keeping getting distracted for the fact that I kept getting distracted uh, and not just grinding through the show because it's boring. 
see normally i would just like this is the sort of anime that yeah you just yeah it sucks and then you just have a few beers and get through it and it's fine and i've done this many times but i'm like kind of sick now i have a bit of a cold and when i drink alcohol it makes my colds way worse and like i don't i don't really want to go through that <laughs> like drinking and watching this would probably be pretty fun but i don't want to deal with like a week of being sick <laughs> or whatever uh worse than it has to be so i'm just gonna not do that this is a sort of anime where if i had if i was like smoking weed this would be great i would be having amazing amounts of fun right now but i, I don't i don't smoke weed i don't have any weed to smoke you know <sighs> well i guess we just gotta we just got a Gaman Studio. You know, watching this series has made me reappraise A's more. And I know that I like gave some kind of strange comments about A's, right? Where I was like, it's good. And I don't understand why it's not my favorite show of all time. But like, I think I I I went really quite hard on the like criticism in that segment like after i was watching it but like thinking back to it as a narrative it is really impressive to have like fate who was fate's like season one is effectively fate's tragic backstory and then all of the actual characterization of fate happens in a's and it's really good and very effective um, a lot of the characterization of Nanoha happens in A's. I mean, a lot of it also happened in season one, but they continue her arc very effectively. And then you have five new characters, all of whom are the bad guys, which the show also does a really good job of handling, and they have a really satisfying arc. Plus Hayate, who is one of the five, with like an especially strong arc. Like, it's really impressive to juggle that many character arcs and make it all work. And it does pretty much all work um, to the point where seeing them in the future in uh, Strikers, like I really care about these characters and the way they've progressed into adulthood is very, like seeing that is, it's, it's always satisfying to watch them do cool shit or just be on screen, because, and the only reason, like, I'm not giving A's enough credit, that the only reason that is, it's because it's not because of this show, the only reason that I care about these characters is because A's was good. Um, so, like, I think I'm under-appreciating how good A's really was, or not communicating it very well. I don't know what I'm doing with it, but I, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> Whatever I'm doing, it's wrong. But, like, uh, like, Comparing the battles in Strikers to the battles in A's, like, A's outpaces Strikers by a mile. The battles in A's, way better. Way more interesting and unique. The world building uh, stuff, you know, that A's did, it had a, it had a, A's had a lot of weight to carry in 13 episodes. And it did a really good job. And it really wasn't, unlike this show, overly long and terribly paced. You know, it 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 has a great opening. I like this show, terrible first like five episodes, just dog shit garbage. The first season of Nanoha has it's a bit of a slog until episode six or so, uh, episode four if I'm giving it a bit more credit. Um, whereas Strikers is just like hot garbage. <laughs> I was going to say until, but it's, look, it's really bad. At least it doesn't, it does nothing. The plot, I'll just say the plot doesn't get going. The plot doesn't even begin to get going until, so I'm on episode 13 right now. In episode 12, you're finally starting to see, like, you're getting a couple of hints. I mean, they really, like, don't introduce the bad guys proper until episode 11, and then, like, Episode 12, 13, you're, 
and really 13, you're finally starting to see like some of their motivations, but you don't like just get a hint that they have motivate. They, they exist and they might even have motivations. It's like, hold on a goddamn second, you know, coming. And I think it might turn out to be good because obviously, uh, what's his name? The guy who writes, he writes all of these, right? Suzuki something. Um, hold on, let me scroll down to the staff section on now. Uh, isn't it the same guy that wrote all of it? Yeah, yeah, Masaki Suzuki. Did, I'm pretty sure he he wrote he wrote every every part of Nanoha. Uh, he like he he did it with he did it before, <laughs> like the bad guys who have a flushed out tragic backstory and motivation. He did it with fate. He did it with the knights and Hayate. I'm sure he can pull it off again. Uh, but he's taken his time with this one. Um, you know, I'm trying to give the show a little more credit. I've been saying it's dog shit garbage. It's just mo mostly boring. Like, I think now that the plot is actually starting to move, and I, you know, literally halfway through the show, uh, it might get a little more interesting. Or it, it's already getting a little more interesting. Uh, but no, I really didn't give A's enough credit. Like... It just has, and like, the, it's, there's a lot of interesting stuff that happens in A's, like, the backstory behind the, the Book of Darkness slash, what is it, Book of, of the Sky, reinforce that whole book, the book thing, that, 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 the whole thing revolves around, like, it's actually interesting and nuanced all of the ways the different characters are relating to this, like how information is discovered and portrayed and what different pieces of information different characters have access to and all of this sort of thing and how it all plays into it. It's all actually really well juggled and like genuinely compelling. And not just that, but the, the drama around Hayate and the Knights and this no, it's actually good. I should give. I should be giving A's more fucking credit than I gave it. I mean, I I tried to give it credit, but I was busy pointing out flaws to try and figure out why I wasn't like in love with it. But I didn't spend enough time telling you guys why the show is good. I feel like, or really even just thinking to myself, why the show is so good. Like the show is actually really good. What did I give it? Did I give it a seven? I feel like it deserves an eight. Whatever I gave it. I did give it an eight. Okay, so I'm I'm not retarded. <laughs> they also have introduced Vivio now, which is I'm a massive sucker for heterochromia. Character with heterochromia, I'm in. Uh, and so you know, obviously I'm on board. I'm on board for Vivio being being cool because I just I'm a, I like I like the the when the eyes they're different colors. That's not normally. That's not normally at all. That's fucking sick. Okay, so let me talk about things that Strikers has done well. Moments in Strikers that have worked. There have actually been... Okay, now that we've had run-ins with the bad guys, finally, halfway through the show, there have been some interesting moments in some of these fights. I wouldn't class the fights themselves as, like, well choreographed or particularly well thought through. And as a guy, I just, I'm not someone who is super big on anime superpower fights in the first place, although I think they have their place. Um, so, you know, that's cool. There's also a really great moment, which I didn't talk about, but I definitely should have, where... Um, yeah, I'm just checking if I have a nosebleed because I've been I had a nosebleed like a few days ago, not a few, like a week ago, and I've been like paranoid about having a nose. I don't normally get nosebleeds, so like I had I had one, and I've been like every time I feel something weird going on with my nose, I I've been like paranoid. <laughs> anyway, um, there's a really great moment, like actually really great moment, where um, who is it? Tia, Tio, Tia, what's her name again? I gotta get the fucking uh, 
mal page up so i can remember it's edio right rio tio whatever the fuck her name is uh she's like actually has some good characterization where she's like thinking about how all the other characters in the the squad everyone else has like some particular superpower i mean like obviously nano her fate and hayate are like giga strong triple s tier mages or whatever and then the knights are also really strong and then even all of the other people have some special ability and she's the only one that's normal and then she fucks up on a mission and like accidentally almost shoots um subaru uh with like a stray bullet and gets yelled at by one of the knights the redhead what's her name again i don't know whatever um and so with all of this weighing on her conscience she starts training really hard and training powerful and dangerous maneuvers which she then pulls out in training against nanoha and then nanoha gets pissed and i was watching this and i was like this is terrible this is completely out of character for nanoha nanoha would never fucking do this she gets she like actually you know it's cool moment i guess where it's like oh she's you know playing around for the training and like letting herself kind of get beat and then for a second there she actually lets her power level through and just easily stops the fight instantly and is like don't fucking do that again you dumbass die go away get out of my sight you know whatever and then they spend a while just shitting on this character and i'm like what the fuck is going on this sucks and then it's revealed that during the 10 years in between Nanoha A's and Strikers, uh, Nanoha like fucked up big time and got hurt because she was pushing herself too hard. And that like it recontextualizes all of the previous series of Nanoha of like, you know, yeah, she is constantly pushing herself way beyond her limits. And it's like, oh, she had to do that because she didn't have any option in those shows. But her, her making that a habit, like, caused her to almost die and to be hospitalized and completely out of action. And it was very serious and put her friends at risk and so on. Um, and so in her training, she is now, like, making sure to impress upon these, you know, young mages that they shouldn't do that, that they should have, you know... They, you shouldn't push yourself to your absolute limit every single time. You should only do that if absolutely necessary. And, uh, you know, that's actually a really interesting and cool plot beat. It makes for interesting characterization of uh, the new characters and the old characters, and it recontextualizes the old shows in an interesting way. That is That was good shit. I, shouldn't, I should have mentioned that when it happened, because that was a whole... It happened slowly over the course of, like, multiple episodes, which is why I didn't mention it. Uh, but but thinking back on it, that was a really good little mini arc that took place, and I liked it. I gotta say, watching Nanaha and Fate effectively raise a daughter together is really good shit. It just turns out that I only care about Nanaha and Fate's relationship and personalities, and the rest of the show is garbage. It's almost like that's the case. Okay, I'm going to rescind my complaint from earlier, where I said, where the fuck are they? What's going on? What happened to the old Deep Space Nine base? They have finally explained what happened. It was just not explained yet. It was already a bit of a nitpick, but now they've actually explained it. I rescind that comment. We're back. It's day four of suffering through Nanoha, laying around suffering through Nanoha Strikers. It's day four of laying around suffering. I got up to episode 15 yesterday. <sighs> Look, the show is not that bad. It's not like, I don't think it's below a five out of 10. I know I'm fucking myanimalist.com brain rotted and I have gave everything a 10 out of 10 rating. But I am. That's I am that brain rotted. Okay. There are good parts to this show. 
everything relating to the characters I give a fuck about, Nanoha, Fate, Hayate, Vivio, and everything related to them is good as fuck, actually. And the world building stuff, as much as it is inconsistent sometimes, is still cool and interesting. It's just, you know, everything else, it's not necessarily even bad. It's just not for me. Like, it's... And sometimes it is. Sometimes it crosses the boundary where I'm like, okay, this is now close enough to something that I would like that I can care about it. Uh, You know? But oftentimes it's not. I think if you... If your favorite aspect... Of, I don't even know. I don't even know who would like this anime. No one, I don't know. (laughs) I feel like a lot of people would like this show, uh, like, more than me. Like, I think people with more tolerance to characters being introduced through melodrama. Like, if you, if, 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 uh, Erio and, uh, uh, fucking Subaru... If their characterization, if they're like introductions, their introductory characterizations work for you, like if you find them to be compelling for whatever reason, you'd probably like this show quite a lot. It's just that for me, they do nothing. <laughs> like they're just not, they just don't, they, I, I, I don't get a sense of them as people in any way. I, I mean, I gotta, like, somehow, even though. In season, like, one, Nanoha, like, is just sort of an empty shell of a character, you know? I still kind of feel like I care about her more than I care about these other characters, just because, A, I can categorize her very easily. Magical girl archetype. Yeah, I get that. I've seen magical girl shows before. I know what I'm looking at, and I like it. You don't need to go through the whole hullabaloo of explaining what a magical girl character is. I've seen other magical girl shows. I know exactly who Nanoha is. So honestly, it's kind of cool to skip that shit, you know? It's like, uh, what am I thinking about? You you know Marvel Spider-Man? <laughs> How they made some, they made a Spider-Man movie and they were like, we're just not going to do an origin story because we've already done, everyone already knows Spider-Man's origin story. We just jump in, he's already Spider-Man. You know, it's like that. It's like every ma- magical girl anime, it's kind of the same shit. That's not true. That's, but you know what I mean. Every magical girl protagonist is kind of the same shit. Uh, so we're just gonna skip the over. We're just gonna skip over all of that. Like here's here's Nanoha. She's the magical girl protagonist, and then it's like you're now watching a magical girl protagonist in the middle of a sci-fi multi-dimensional universe ending epic fight between uh, a bunch of guardians of a a secret relic from a lost civilization uh, you know who are trying to save this uh, sickly you know terminally ill girl who they consider family and they know they're hurting her by like doing this going against what she would want but they can't help themselves because they want to save her at, at, at you're watching a fucking magical girl go through it. Like, that's fucking sick. <laughs> like, you can't get that anywhere else. And now, it's like, that magical girl archetype is now, like, grown-up fucking bureaucrat-type character. Like, that shit doesn't exist anywhere else other than Nanoha, and it's sick. But, oh, I'm a fucking, you know, fucking pink-haired teenager who wants to be the best, but, oh, no, my powers are just average. I guess I have to train harder than ever. That shit, that exists everywhere. I can get that in 25 different anime that are all better than this one, you know? Uh, oh, my fucking, you know, we've done away with any magical girl aesthetics now. So it's like, oh, yeah, I'm just a shonen side character who has a gun, and that's my power. Uh, isn't that cool? Yeah, no, really. It's not that cool. It's not that cool at all. It's, it's, it's actually quite boring. <laughs> but, you know, we're in the home stretch now. 
Uh, now on Mal, I will say on Mal, Nanoha Vivid has the lowest rating of any Nanoha <laughs> any Nanoha thing, and it is also A1 Pictures. So, like, there's a strong chance that Vivid is kind of garbage. It, it's very possible. However, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I Let's not think about the future, okay? Let's just live in the moment. Let's live in the moment and, and get through the final few episodes of... Uh, I say final few episodes, but let's get through the rest of... of, of Strikers before we start worrying about about anything else. Uh, one thing they try and do in Strikers, which is new for the series, is like internal bureau political intrigue and political like jostling and and dynamics and stuff. And uh, it that is bad. <laughs> it doesn't work. It's way too like overly dumbed down and simplified, and it just feels forced. Like it feels like it's just in there to create uh, tension but it doesn't really follow like consistent logic in my opinion. And this is coming from like, let me just remind you that my favorite TV show is Star Trek, the next generation, like sci-fi politics nonsense is my shit. Uh, but obviously nothing is ever going to be as good as TNG. So, uh, maybe my standards are just too high. Uh, but no, I, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, personally, I just, I think it could have been done well, uh, but it sort of just, it just sort of serves to happen in the background and create, uh, you know, movement, but it doesn't, it doesn't really feel justified in the world, uh, to me. Uh, so in this battle that's happening right now, one of the characters is using like these floating hologram computer things that just exist in every sci-fi anime, but the like keyboard is is styled like the keyboard of a piano, and whenever she's using it, an organ plays in the soundtrack as if she's playing the organ. It's just a cool little I don't even know what it is. It's a cool little thing they do that is cool the the there's this conference right there's this conference where all the higher ups in the bureau are all meeting up at the hq on the planet to discuss things and it's it's a it's a fine bit of world building it's whatever it doesn't really matter it just exists to be attacked by the bad guys and nanoha and fate are going in there and I'm, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be, like, part of the conference or guarding the conference or both. But whatever the case is, when they go in, they're like, oh, we're not allowed to take our devices in. You guys hold on to our devices while we go in here. Which is just weird. <laughs> why would they not, like, why? It doesn't make any sense. Uh... And it only, ex like, that only exists so that there's not, like, a plot hole, which wouldn't even really be a plot hole, of, like, why don't Nanaho and Fate just fight them off when they get attacked? Because they don't have their devices. But it doesn't even really make sense, because as soon as the attack happens, the they just get them back. The, the other the other guys just, just come into the building and are like, Here, here's your shit that you, you didn't have. And they're like, thanks, before they even had a chance to fight anyone. So what was even the point of that whole, like, what was even the point of that? They could have just ha had, it doesn't even make sense from plot perspective, because nothing changes whether they do or, I mean, I guess they'd be like, like, the only thing that changes is either, if they had their devices, they could have just immediately gone and fought the attackers. So in this case, the the new recruits, the new characters, have to hold them off for a while before Nanoha and Fate can arrive. I suppose they're going to do like an 11th hour type of situation where it looks like they're just about to lose. And then Nanoha and Fate and Hayate all show up with their Giga S-rank Chad powers and 
destroy everyone or at least help out. I don't know. That's probably what's going to happen. But you could have just had, there was many better ways to, there's many better ways to create that scenario rather than having this strange thing where they're like, oh, you guys have to take our devices. We're not allowed them in. And then one episode later, oh, thanks for delivering our devices to us, guys. It's just really clunky. I know I'm being very mean to the show. I'm being extremely mean and harsh on this show. But frankly, it's it's nowhere near as bad as I'm making it out. I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm... Shit. This is the same thing that happened with Ace. Like, I... I'm not pointing out... I'm, I'm mainly pointing out the failings. Like... These are very minor, like, if you actually pay attention to what I'm saying, a lot of it is kind of minor stuff. I'm not mostly talking about fundamental stuff. There is some fundamental stuff that I think is a problem in the show. Um, but, like, this is not a garbage, trash, shit tier 1 out of 10 anime, you know? Like, let's not let's not pretend that it's, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll wait until I finish it, to really judge the quality because there's a lot of plot threads that depending on how they turn out will affect my opinion of the show uh but yeah like let me make it clear show has problems but it's not actually garbage dog shit awful i don't know if i'm just retarded but i didn't even realize that subu had a sister until she like died their character designs are so similar, I just thought it was the same person. I didn't even notice that that was... I don't know if the show just didn't, didn't mention it enough or, or what. I just didn't even fucking notice. I want to say, though, this is... It's, 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 I'm warming up to it a bit. I don't know if it's the, the, the giant kind of monster or whatever or whatever's going on with me, but... But uh, I also think the plot is, like, actually going, going now. And stuff is happening. Intrigue is happening. Finally, we got Intrigue. We haven't had any of that so far, but, uh, you know, I gotta give the show some credit for this. It's a, it's not bad. Like, I'm, I'm a sucker. I know it's like a really cheesy thing that happens all the time, but honestly, like, not enough times, it, it doesn't happen good enough. Um, like, you know in Hunter x Hunter, when Gon goes fucking nuts at the end? Like, that, that, everyone loves that shit, right? And I also love that shit. Like, when a character, like, is, like, experiencing grief or some fucked up shit, and then they just go all out with their powers, and uh, to the point where, like, it doesn't matter if it injures them or whatever, I love that. I'm a sucker for that shit. So watching Subaru do that, like, there's some really cool details. Like, she's being a... Like, she, she sees her sister, like, fucking dying, and she's just, like, you know, go Super Saiyan type mode. And then, like, what's, what's cool about it, the, the cool detail is that as she's running to attack them and, like, crazy manic berserker mode, she's not even bothering to dodge the bullets, and you see... Like, as she's... They never mention it. Like, it's a good show-don't-tell moment where, like, she's... You see her, like, being fucking hit by attacks and bleeding and becoming injured as she's, like, attacking them and just not even reacting or giving a shit. And that's cool. That's cool. Okay, so... Vivio has been kidnapped and shown to Nanoha and Faye being basically tortured by this this doctor whatever his name is he has a weird like italian name what what do they call him what's his fucking name again it's like stretchy italy or something <laughs> what the what hold on i'm bad with names okay i gotta look on the mail page to remember his name give me a second all the bad guys have italian names is he even he's not even on here what the fuck? I'm looking. I'm looking. I don't see him. That's not him. No, he's just not on the character page. Hmm. 
No. Ah, Scaglietti. Jail Scaglietti. That's his name. Jail Scaglietti. Dr. Jail Scaglietti, the evil mad genius scientist. The worst villain this series has ever had. Because he has no personality or motive other than being late evil mad scientist genius guy. Now they do something kind of interesting by being like, hey, uh, the Bureau is like secretly funding his research because they want to benefit from it as well. Now that's neat. That's an interesting little twist on it. But okay, yeah. Fate's mother was also just late evil scientist person. But at least she had... Okay, well, first of all, I'm not arguing that she was a great villain. She was also kind of a generic evil villain. But she was actually psychotic. Like, it was... She went psychotic when her daughter died due to one of her own experiments. Uh, and just went insane. And secondly, it was never about her. What it was about was how her being fucked up went on to influence fate. It was really all just an excuse to like she was never the focus. She she it was it was just how her actions affected fate. That's the interesting part of season one. I'm not arguing that she was a great villain, but fate is the real character here that anyone cares about, and that was really good. Uh, you know, like when you see fate show up for a few fights and she's sort of a weird mysterious character and you don't know what's going on with her and then you see her being whipped by her mother it's a very affecting scene like it's it's a really it's it's i don't know it's it's a bit over the top it's a bit in your face it's a bit bit on the nose even but it works it's very effective at least for me um whereas so yeah Fate's mother might have just been also kind of an evil mad scientist psycho, but she was actually an evil mad scientist psycho. They didn't even try to, <laughs> like, redeem her. She, whereas, I don't know, this guy, it, it's, it, it's interesting because she isn't, like, Fate's mother is an evil mad scientist psycho, and she cloned her daughter who died and turned her into Fate, and was sort of driven mad by the fact that fate was never her real daughter. Um, but in reality, fate is super chill, <laughs> and there was no reason for her to go fucking nuts and whip fate. And it was interesting the way fate had sort of the psychological impact of fate having this abusive family situation and then, you know, getting through it thanks to Nanoha and becoming a well-adjusted person and re recovering from her, her trauma, especially in A's when they address this. Like, yeah, the, the, I don't remember her name. The mother character isn't super, you know, deep or uh, fleshed out, but that doesn't matter because fate is, and that was always the point. Whereas this mad scientist villain from this, and then obviously the villains in A's, are uh, not even villains. Calling calling them bad guys doesn't even make sense. It's it's A's is like you know you don't want the good guys to beat the bad guys. You just want everyone to reconcile so that they can everyone can get what they want and they can come together and uh, you know the real bad guy is just like the set of circumstances that they all happen to find themselves in, and they, you just want to you like you root for every side. You just want everyone to overcome this fucked up situation that everyone's been put in and forced to do fucked up shit uh, that no no one really wants to be doing. No one really wants to be fighting, but they all have to because of various reasons. Like, it's great. Uh, whereas this is just, I'm the mad scientist guy who's going to make a cyborg army by kidnapping children. <laughs> it's like, well, you just don't, come on. You could do something a bit more interesting than that, surely. Fate, the series that up until now has been known for having interesting and nuanced villains, uh, just gives up. I also said Fate again. I keep calling this show Fate. There's just a character called Fate. The show is called Nanoha. Uh, there's another anime that's called Fate, and that's a different show entirely. It's not called Fate. 
I, I I'm not going to bother to do this in editing, but uh, someone someone in the comments uh, actually don't bother. I was going to say give me a give me a, a counter for how many times I accidentally called this show fate. Uh, you could do that if you want. You know what? You could do that if you want. I bet I bet Mellow Kyla will do that. Uh, yeah. So that's definitely something that this this season like severely lacks compared to the previous seasons of Nano Her. Uh, I don't really know what's going on, but I feel like we're building up to a big final battle. Anyway, no. What I wanted the reason I started recording is what I wanted to. Ha I was gonna say if I was making this show. Um, the second that Nanoha saw her daughter being tortured, she would go fucking nuts and just full power. Like, I just want to see, and I'm sure they'll do it in the big final fight. I'm sure it'll happen. I hope it happens. If it doesn't, this show is fucking garbage. I, I want to see Nanoha at full power. Adult Nanoha at full fucking power. That's what I want to see. I, I, they've been sort of like lightly teasing us through the whole show, so I'm really hoping they do that. But I, I just want it to happen now because I, I just told you how much I like that shit character. Who? Oh no, you fucked with me. And I've actually been super powerful the whole time. Uh, if I just let go and don't don't care about hurting myself, you know, like uh, what is it? Uh, you, you, uh, I, I, there's a there's a actual saying about this, but the thing that popped into my head was demons run when a good man goes to war, which is from Doctor Who. Uh, so we're just going to use that. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I'm kind of lost. <laughs> I don't really know what's happening. We got an Evangelion seal slash... Um, Psy what's that fucking anime called? Psycho Psychonauts? No, Psychopass. Psychopass thing going on. It and I'm not. They've there was a huge law dump and I was not. I I, I didn't quite follow it. <laughs> it was a it was a lot of information, uh, very very quickly and uh, very vaguely. It didn't they they. Mm, I don't know what I don't I don't know what's happening. I but I'm sure it doesn't matter. I'm sure it doesn't matter. Um, the thing things there's brains and there's brains and vats that are controlling everything from behind the scenes. That's that's what matters. I'm ass I'm assuming. Uh, things are going on. Uh, certainly, certainly an anime. Suddenly, an a, a Japan a piece of Japanimation. It's suddenly a a, a, a a television program. One critique I leveled at Strikers is that the the magical abilities and devices are way worse in this series compared to the ones from from previous seasons. And I said that, and I said that uh, you know the original ones. They were all based on the Magical Girl stuff concept. Uh, and yet these ones are like more specific and gimmicky. And you might have thought to yourself, how is that worse? Like having more unique and interesting weapon variety rather than everyone sort of using the same kind of thing. Why would that be worse? The reason is that the devices in Nanoha and A's uh, they there's a lot of time spent on their mechanics. There's a lot of time spent like just animating them, for example, doing different transformations in the different modes, listening to them talk, right before an attack is announced. Watching you you like um you watch these devices do mechanical transformation shit and spew steam after they finished an attack from like. I don't even know how to describe it, but it looks really cool every time they do it. Uh, you know, you see them get upgraded with new abilities or unlock new uh, modes. Like Fate has this like a Buster Sword or, or like Guts Sword type type of situation, um, or like Fate's Badish, right? It has like an axe form, which is like the basic version. And then it goes like, and turns into a scythe. And then it goes like, and turns into a, 
like Buster Sword, and it's just there's a lot of time spent on the intricate mechanics, uh, like literally mechanics, like the mechanisms by which these swords, tra or not swords, these these devices transform into different modes, and uh, you know they all talk and announce their attacks and forms. Uh, it, whereas the the weapons, the devices of the newer characters don't do any of that stuff. Like, it happens, but it happens sort of in the background. It's not the focus at all during battle. They sort of sit, they sort of get away, and it's just sort of, yeah, they play into the anime. Like, the in the same way in A's, you know, uh, Bardisha and um, uh, Raising Heart, they get damaged in the first fight, and then... Uh, you know, they they are introduced to have some personality. Like, they, they are AI and they, like, talk back. And they do some of that in Strikers with the with the Subaru's device. But, like, I don't know. They do some of it, but they don't have the different modes and the, and, and the mechanical mecha-style sequences where they're, they're, they have these, like, industrial machinic movements and, and animations they don't do any of that stuff they're all very they're all much more sterile and and in the back and just sort of allowing the characters to do combat which kind of just looks like regular combat you know when um there's a lot more focus on hand-to-hand -hand combat like yeah it happens in a superhuman way and there are certain special abilities like uh, the one I keep ragging on, which is it's just a gun, or shadow clone jutsu, <laughs> or you know there are certain abilities like that. But in you know there were the stuff that happens in season one and A's. It's like you get a much stronger sense of like these are the three different types of shields and how those different shields interact with different magic attacks and why. Like yeah, they explain they actually I'm saying this, but they explain that in Strikers. So. They're sort of post hoc justifying stuff that happened in the earlier seasons, but then they don't bring that stuff back. For, like they explain the mechanics of how it worked in the past, only to not use it again. Like yeah, it happens, but it's not the focus. It's not as much of a strong focus on the mechanics of the magical system as it was in um, in A's and uh, and the, uh, A's particularly. Like uh, the whole introduction of the cartridge system. It's almost like the, I don't know, maybe like the introduction of Nen in Hunter x Hunter, where it's like the, a game-changing uh, thing. Like, hey, there's actually this entirely different Belkin school of magic that uses this entirely different system that, firstly, looks fucking awesome on screen. It looks cool every time. Throughout, uh, throughout Strikers, throughout Ace, throughout the whole show, every time these weapons do a shotgun pump shotgun reload and eject a cartridge it is the coolest shit ever um it looks cool every time it, whoever came up i mean i know who came up with it, it was masami tazuki that's his name right something like that genius fucking genius um uh but yeah there's i don't know they 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 didn't that that lack like yeah the weapons were more similar to each other in form and it was implied that that's just what devices look like. Like, yeah, every device is kind of a magical girl stuff. That's the justification for why Nanoha looks like a generic magical girl, kind of. But that's just what de devices look like. Chrono has one, and he's not a magical girl. He's just, like, a guy, you know? Like, that's just what web devices look like. But then in strikers they're like no no devices actually come in all sorts of shapes and sizes this one's roller skates this one's a gun with the x-men logo on it you know like uh this one's a weird lance that's like a a, a rocket powered lance that's kind of cool i guess uh you know like they they kind of and yeah they go a little you know there's there's the the device in a's that's like a, a card like a like a playing card. I was reaching over for a playing card. I have some somewhere. I don't know if they're even here, but uh, you know, like a playing card. So they start to introduce some stuff like that, but the main, those are like the gimmick ones, the the rare and special ones that aren't just the like Raising Heart and Bardish and whatever. 
Like, yeah, they're not just generic magical girl stuffs. They're intricately mechanical devices that you just can't see anything like that in any other anime. And so that's why I'm disappointed that the devices in Strikers aren't anywhere near as, uh, or aren't retaining that concept and are more just like, yeah, they're just weapons in this world and they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and they they don't necessarily have these interesting um, mecha sequences. And I, I like the mecha sequences. Bring back the mecha sequences. There's just There's just some sort of kaiju fight happening now. Look, I'm not against this. I'm not against this. I just wasn't expecting it. Sometimes the art in this show is really bad. I haven't been pointing this out. None of is a low-budget show trying to do high-budget stuff. I'm not someone who particularly cares about art or animation quality if this narrative is good. You know, that stuff's kind of like a bonus to me. I watch mostly pulpy, low-budget anime anyway. But look at this, bro. I don't know if it's coming across on camera, but something got really fucked. Her, her boobs are too big, and her head is too small, and her shoulders are too wide. What is going on here? Something very strange is going on here. <laughs> yes, it's dumb as shit that the bad guy put up monitors so that everyone can uh, fucking FaceTime each other during the final battle. Yes, it's dumb as shit. We're just gonna ignore it. It's a stupid plot contrivance that they can communicate. The, 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 it, it's obviously not supposed to be something that makes sense, so I'm not gonna pretend that it has to make sense. I just finished Maho Shoujo Didikaru Nano Hasutorai Kasu. It's it, we, we got through it, so I had to say it in katakana. That's right. Oh boy, that was a fucking slog. Um. Wow, what do I say about that show? What can, what, how do I conclude this all? Uh, I'm blue balled. I've been edged. I've been edged. I've been blue balled. I've been disappointed. Um, you know how I said, oh yeah, maybe it's okay that Nano Hut doesn't immediately go all out because well, how it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. We don't get. To, we never really get to see Nano Hut at full power level, just destroying shit and fate is even worse. Fate immediately gets trapped in a cage where she stays for three episodes doing fucking nothing until she randomly decides, oh yeah, I guess I could just break out of this. And then in the meantime, by the way, all the bad guys are presumably just standing still staring at her, waiting, like it's stupid. Fate doesn't get a moment. Nanoha doesn't really get a moment. Vivio gets a moment. Hayate gets a moment. But she doesn't get, none of them get moments shown in big fucking power level, destroying shit, gone and Killua in the lower levels of the tournament arc, just fucking owning people. None, they don't get that, that moment. You know what I mean? The moment where it's like, oh, you, you fucked with the wrong guy. Like, I, that's what I want to see. And ultimately, the thing that really pissed me off about this is you, you, you made an, an a character and an anime that is too good for you. You made Vivio, okay? You made a fucking perfect relationship, mother-daughter relationship, the cutest little kid in the in fucking history, designed specifically to appeal to me with the blonde hair and the heterochromia. I'm like, I want to protect Vivio with with everything I fucking have. Okay, like, and then the fact that the, the bitch, the evil bitch who, like, laughs as she's torturing Vivio, like, yeah, she's defeated, but it's not, she's not, she just gets arrested, basically, like, she does, you need to, like, I want to see her fucking tortured to death, I want to see a John Wick moment, I want to see, like, I want to see her suffer, she doesn't, it, most of it is just focused on Nano. Like, I want to see... Oh, you fucking kidnapped my daughter? You don't know what the fuck you just did. I'm fucking Nano her, bitch. I was nine years old, and I defeated a universe-ending catastrophe twice, right? You don't know what the fuck you just fucked with? I'm gonna pull up, and I'm gonna fuck your shit up. That's what I wanted to see. And it just doesn't happen. It, you just don't get to see that. And that's... 
that's so frustrating. Ah, uh, <laughs> that that was the one thing that I was like, please do that in this in this anime, and they just don't do it. They just don't do it. Ah, uh, it's really fucking. Ah, uh, man, I'm blue balled. I did not like that. Now there were things I did like about the the whole ending uh, part of the show, the the final battle and the ending, the the epilogue slash ending. Uh, you know, I think that Subaru and Erio, they actually ended up having good arcs. They they had satisfying character progression. They had good resolutions for all of their struggles. Uh, you know, the final battle felt like a good conclusion to their stories, where it's also like just the beginning of you know what these characters will be up to in the future, just like A's was for Nanaho and Fate. Like, yeah, you know what? I know I said I didn't care about them. I didn't give a shit about them. By the end of the show, I did actually care about them. I did actually give a shit about them. I got to give it credit for that. I also got to give credit to everything surrounding Vivio. Her, the, the entire, everything that happens to her, everything she says and does, is it's, it's just great. It works emotionally very well. Um... The, the fight between her and Nanoha, where they're talking to each other, and she's like, everything's fake, I'm, I'm just a, a, a Nisei Mono, you know? And Nanoha's like, it doesn't matter, like, you know, you're still my daughter. That shit, that shit works. It was great. It was, it was really fucking good. Um, I'm not, con- you know, I, I think they went too far, though, with making Vivio too likable as a character <laughs> like just the most likable innocent fucking person ever and then all these fuckers who participated in her abuse you can't i'm not i don't give a fuck and i'm not you i'm gonna watch nano her vivid and all of these bad guys are gonna be redeemed it's like bro you don't get to be redeemed you willingly participated in this i hope you all die I don't care if your mom's sick. Don't torture a kid about it. You know? And don't don't both do that and also not act like you even give a shit. You know? I don't... Oh, man. I think this show is at best a 6 out of 10. It does some things well. It's pretty frustrating because it does some things really well. And there's a lot of stuff you can't get anywhere else. It's unique in a lot of interesting ways. And so it's and there's a lot of there's a lot of really interesting decisions that exist within this this show's universe and so on. But it also just stumbles so often. It just almost gets there. There's so many cases where it just almost gets there and then fails on the execution that I just it 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 just doesn't it just didn't work. And I do think I mean, let's also not forget that I think the first half of the entire anime is mostly garbage. The second half, significantly better. Once there's a plot, the show gets better. Who could have possibly seen this coming? Who would have thought that an anime with stakes and antagonists <laughs> and uh, you know challenges for characters to overcome and, and so on would be would be better with with those things. Who could have possibly predicted this? <sighs> this lighting is extremely menacing because I'm like, you know, my light is like down here, my lamp, so it's like I'm, I'm lit from the bottom. It's very menacing lighting. Yeah, overall, um, my life would have been better if I hadn't watched this anime. <laughs> uh, that's not to say... There weren't good parts. I talked about many of the good parts. I, I think that most of the, the whole six episode long final battle, as much as many things don't make sense, there's a lot of like time stretching. Like the the, the whole, I, it's, it's a challenging thing to write. You've got like eight characters and that's just the good guys to keep track of. Like there's a lot of shit happening all at once, and a lot of it is quite complicated, to keep all of that shit going at the same time, while also making it all make sense together, is a very difficult writing challenge. It's extremely difficult to write and direct something like that. And 
it's they fuck it up. <laughs> they don't succeed. Like they do their best, but there's a lot of stuff. And the most egregious thing is fate being trapped in a in a little thing that she easily breaks out of for three episodes straight, while presumably while all sorts of other things are happening. And presumably the three bad guys that are standing there when she gets trapped, who are still standing in the exact same place when she gets out, have just been standing there staring at her for like three hours, <laughs> like <laughs> doing nothing. It's it's for the fact that there were just screens everywhere. There's everyone's just just got magic zoom call at all times with everyone else just to be hyper convenient. It's it's a bit stupid. The villain who just doesn't have a motivation really. Like, he's just the, the evil guy because he's kind of just the evil guy. Um, and worse than that, the evil woman who is even more evil because the evil guy is just a comically evil guy who's like a mad scientist who just wants to do his mad scientist research and is being secretly funded by the Bureau to do it. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. But then there's his, like, the, the mini boss, the woman who is, like, laughing maniacally, the psycho woman. Like, she's just a psycho for no reason, and she just likes hurting people, I guess. And she doesn't really get enough comeuppance. No one gets enough co- Everyone, all of, I'm not, you don't fuck with Vivio, man. You fuck with Vivio, you deserve to be killed painfully. Like, fucking man. <laughs> I think the way, like, I feel like Nanoha, Fate, and Hayate are supposed to be, in-universe, really strong. They're supposed to be S-plus, or like S- double S-class mages, who are rare. Um, and even within that, they are like particularly experienced, because they all started when they were kids. They were all they're all very young. They've been in the Bureau for a long time, for 10 years, doing this shit. And even within that system, they're already particularly strong. And it just never really happens <laughs> like you're told that and i was waiting the entire show to see that and then you just don't there is like they fuck up the power power scaling in this anime really bad and it's extremely disappointing like i really want to see what it looks like for nanoha to go all out for fate to go all out against a but you know what i mean and the only person who you see actually do this is the red-haired knight girl um which is cool it's cool when she does it more of that please (laughs) like and then there's also just dumb shit that happens that is like so contrived like the little fairy bitch the little tiny girl the enemy tiny girl i don't remember her name and then she's got this knight guy who she's buddy buddy partners with and then the knight guy is like my honor and my my chivalry and I'm, i'm a glorious honorable knight and i hope to fight this person in honorable combat and then the fairy bitch is like what are you talking about my master i don't i don't want you to die and he's like i'm dying anyway and then he goes up to his old commander in the middle of it's like why did you let my friends die in that operation back in nam and then the old commander is like and then gets fucking stabbed through the back for no reason by a random cat i don't even know what some he dies somehow Someone shows up, teleports behind him, and says nothing personal, kid, and just stabs him before he can really give anyone any closure. And then the knight bitch from the knights is like, uh, I do a fucking Kurosawa, one hit, one strike, one kill on the, the other knight guy from the, the... And then he's dead. And then the fairy bitch is like, well my master would have wanted me to team up with you now, so I guess I'm going to do that. What? It just happened. Like, it seems that it seems so out of character of her because she's spent the... In- I don't know. It's supposed to be her reaching the peak of her character arc where she's, like, always being... I don't know. It's just really weird and stupid. <laughs> you have to see it. It's just really do- dumb the way it works out. And it... it yeah. It's just, dude, it's just dumb. It's just dumb bullshit. She's just randomly like, I guess I'm a good guy now. Oh, my my master died. Well, he would have wanted me to join with the strong knight who killed him. And thank you for giving him the opportunity to die with honor as a knight. That's what she literally says. What the fuck are you talking about? You spent the entire anime, like, desperately trying to get this guy to not die because you are, like, friends with him or love him or whatever. 
And now the second he's actually killed, you're like, oh, thank you for letting him die with honor. What are you talking about, man? You, you should not be thinking that. That is not what your character is. Oh, it's fucking nuts. They, everyone's neutered and weak. Everyone acts stupid. But there's also good shit. Like the sniper guy. The sniper guy, there's a guy, okay? There's a guy who, um, he flies helicopters. And it was built up, this is actually good, this is good shit, it's really well done. He was built up really slowly over the course of a few episodes from like a background character, effectively, who didn't even play into it, to like, people goes up to him like, oh, you used to be an, an ace, like, what what happened to you? And he's like, oh, there's a vague answer, a vague answer that hints at a deeper backstory. Um, and now I just fly helicopters. And then it like slowly builds up his character until it's revealed that he used to be like an ace sniper. Until one day, he like, there was a, a hostage situation and he accidentally shot the hostage. He, he missed and, and shot the hostage in the eye. And then the, the, the hostage girl was like his sister or some shit. It's, it's contrived. It's Nanoha. It is what it is. And then she's like, comes up to him in hospital with a glass eye and is like, I'm okay. Look, my eye has healed. Everything's fine. You can go back to being chill now. And he's like all troubled about it, right? And then, and then he gets his moment when he fucking saves uh, some one of them, Ed, Edio, I think. He, he, like, Edio is about to be attacked from behind, and then you just see a <laughs> sniper bolt kill the guy, that, and then he's like, oh, here he was, hanging out in the back of a fucking helicopter with a sniper rifle. See, his arc is, is way better <laughs> than most of the shit in this show. His arc is great. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, where where. The, the whole, oh, I'm going to shut down the, the task force political intrigue that I mentioned earlier. I brought up Star Trek. Like, that just doesn't go anywhere. That just dis that just literally goes nowhere. It just is brought up a couple times. And it's like, that's kind of sus. And then it just <laughs> disappears because every because everyone involved dies. That's basically like all of the, the, it's really just the lieutenant big head honcho guy of the bureau that is like weirdly against this because I don't really know why he doesn't like Hayate. It's kind of not really, he's just kind of mean for no reason. And then he just dies. And I guess everyone just sort of stops caring. It's very odd. Like that whole plot point, it, it just completely disappears. There's also a big fight. I don't know. There's some, there's some good stuff. Like I'm not saying it's all garbage. You know, there's, like a lot of the 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 way the good guys are paired up with the bad guys, they all have like matching powers. Like uh oh I'm I'm lay rollerblading robot cyborg girl and I'm fighting my sister who's also rollerblading robot cyborg girl with a big fist. And we both have the big fist and we're equally matched, or like uh they all they all kinda go like that, you know? They all like the. I am the girl who can summon a big monster, and I'm fighting the guy who can summon a big monster. Like they all kind of matched up like that, and uh, I don't know if that it was just a neat bit of symmetry, I guess, in the first place. But it's also supposed to imply like, oh, we're not so different. But no, <laughs> we're pretty different because you guys kidnapped and tortured a child, and are excusing it because you all have like some personal reason why you need to... Well, we, we are trying to stop you from torturing the child and rescue the child, the innocent child that you're torturing. Yeah, we're trying to rescue that child, <laughs> you know? Like, it's not... We're not so different. We're different. We're pretty fucking different, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... Uh, oh, man, it was a lot. It was a lot to get through, and it was so long. It was so much longer than needed. Everything took so long to happen, man. It was just... That, they do a lot. They do a lot with those 26 episodes. They they definitely fill them up. I'll tell you, some 20... It, it's 26 episodes, and it feels like... It doesn't, it doesn't fly by. It does not fly by. It is a slog. Shit happens. I say they, they do a lot. What I mean is they, they, they don't... I don't know how to explain it. I don't know. It's just bad. <laughs> it's just it's just a slog. Uh, but like, 
if you take away, if you stop caring about, like, the things that happen, if you stop caring about, like, dumb little, you know, irrelevant details like the plot or <laughs> characterization or emotions. I mean, they did, they hit some emotions. Like, the whole Vivio thing is great. It's great. You know, they hit emotions. They hit emotions. They don't conclude those emotions satisfyingly, but they, they do, like, they get, like, almost all of the way there. They got like eighty percent of the way. That's that's better than a lot of shows. Um, you know, if you but if you ignore all of that that stuff, like yeah, it's poorly animated. It looks like sh it looks like shit sometimes. Sometimes it looks okay. Sometimes it looks pretty good. Sometimes it looks like shit. Uh, if you ignore that, if you ignore the plot, if you ignore the characters, if you ignore the bad guys and the, any motivations that they might have, uh, or like any of the real logic behind the world building, if you ignore all of those things and you just pay attention to like certain facts of what's happening, like, uh, you know, who cares if it's presented really badly? There's a there's a moment where Nano her like the closest we come to the thing I want, where people marvel at Nano her strength and she actually goes all out. Is she's fighting? The, she's not even really fighting. She comes across a bad guy. Who has a big laser beam attack, and Nanoha is just like laser beams her back and fucking owns her. And then the girl who's got the bad guy girl cyborg fighter warrior person, what are they called? Whatever, uh, is like, damn, she's that powerful. Like that does happen. It just happens for one minute in one episode, and it's never. But it's just kind of inconsequential. It's just I don't know. But, like, if you ignore anything about how it's presented, it does technically happen. <laughs> or, like, and that's, that. it's neat that it happened. Or, like, uh, I don't know, the fact that there were, like, just certain... Nanoha, Fate, and Hayate all sleep in the same bed together, and then Nanoha and Fate adopt a daughter i mean saying this actually is, is a bad example because that stuff actually is executed well so i shouldn't i shouldn't bring that that's that aspect up um like you know this girl that okay you know what we're gonna stop giving examples of this because this is just off topic and we're just gonna, i'm just gonna sit here remembering random factoids from the show as if that's what this is about which is not man that was a slog um <laughs> I'm glad I. I'll tell you what. Though I am very glad that I never have to watch that anime again. I'm very happy about that fact. So in terms of rating, let's end this. Let's end this segment because you know now we we've got two more shows to watch. We have to watch Naruto Vivid, and then we have to watch Vivid Strike. Um, because I said this is the, you look at the title of the video, it says the entire Nanoha franchise. I'm not going to not watch Rivet Strike. Um, but yeah. Uh, rating, mal rating. I think, I, I think I would give it a 6. I think I would give it a 6 out of 10. And it's a, it's a weak 6. It's a low, a low 6. Uh, I think it's just about better than a 5. Just because... Like, if this was just an anime devoid of context, if this didn't have the cool shit about getting to watch Fate and Nanoha and all of the characters from the first two seasons grown up, it would be god, it would be worthless as an anime. But just for that fact and the the like if you were already invested in their storyline, it gives it a bunch of extra points to me. And the whole Vivio aspect of it does elevate it a lot. Like it related to that, right? Like getting to watch Fate and Nanoha be parents is just great. It's um, it's 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 it's, it's, it's it, anything anyone could ever want. So I think a six is as high as I feel comfortable rating it. I don't. I, I really. It's definitely not a seven because there were just so many problems. I just can't give it a seven. Uh, but it's just about better. Than, it's you know, it's better than average. It's not just you know fucking nothing like i'll remember this show this show will stick with me in certain aspects both good and bad but it's 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 so you know it's meaningful there was meaning conveyed in the anime it's better than just like to me a five has to be to be a five it has to be classed as like average 
And to be average, it has to be forgettable and dissolve into the sea of anime slop. It is not that. It is unique. It, it tries. You can't... That's one thing I will say. Like, you cannot say they didn't try. They they definitely tried. They 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 were ambitious as fuck. They were overly ambitious, but I gotta give them some respect for that. So it's a six. Okay, so we're gonna start watching Nanoha Vivid. Um, just get right into it, cause cause why the fuck not? Um, but it uh, it is worth noting for those of you who aren't familiar with the franchise that Vivid is an interesting situation because. Uh, the original series of Nanoha came out in 2004, then exactly one year later, Nanoha A's came out in 2005, and then Strikers came out in 2007, and then there was no Nanoha anime. There were other Nanoha media products, like uh, 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 manga. I think there were two different Nanoha manga set in like different universes. I don't remember the specifics. Uh, but there was there was other media, Nanoha media in the interim, but there was no anime until Vivid, which is 2015. So there was a really long gap uh, between Strikers and Vivid, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how uh, anime has sort of changed in that in that gap. That that like anime culture moved away from the sci-fi battle uh sort of i don't even know what to call it the the stylings the stylistic trends of strikers uh anime kind of moved away from that by the time you were in 2015 it it it, it didn't obviously leave behind any of that stuff but the the aesthetics of it had changed by then you know compare it to something like um, <clears throat> what am I thinking of? Raildex. Like, Raildex is also a sci-fi battle anime, but it's, you know, Strikers is a lot more manga, and Raildex is a lot more light novel. Uh, and so I think, you know, and I I think uh, just from, from guessing, having not seen it, but from looking at, looking around, it looks like the tone of Vivid is going to be a bit less uh self serious maybe it's it's going to be a bit more a bit lighter which is which is good cuz i i like t- shows that are, the lighter in tone and i i particularly think that the Naroha franchise is well suited i i i've always felt like that super self serious tone it works in a's <laughs> uh and it also works in season one and it works sometimes in uh strikers but there's also like i've always i i quite like the the more relaxed i like these characters you know and i i want to see them have a i know that i'm saying this while also complaining that the first half of strikers didn't have anything happening maybe i'm being hypocritical here but i you know i'm just saying i think uh a, a change up might be nice if that's the case i don't know it might be the case that uh, vivid is actually a very serious and sort of shonen style anime it's it's quite possible i'm just guessing from like the 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 way the poster looks and the description of the show on mal you know i'm, I'm sort of just guessing okay so just immediately i was talking about the differences in anime production the compressor on the vocal mics is just insane the the compression is just in like why is it why is it so heavily compressed why did they do that that's odd am i just not used to is that how all anime sounds now and i just haven't listened haven't i don't know i'm sure i'll get used to it very quickly but it's a big difference the older show didn't have as far as i can tell any audible compression on the vocals in fact sometimes the detriment there's a a moment uh in a's where chrono is talking and you can actually tell that the actor is like moving slightly in front of his mic or her mic i don't know who if it's a male or female voice actor who voices chrono uh, but uh 
you can tell that they're moving because like it gets like slightly quieter and slightly louder. I don't know if most people pick up on that, but wait, that sounded like a humble brag. I'm I'm saying I don't know if that's noticeable enough to people who don't have experience in audio. I have exp- I have a university degree in audio. Don't cancel me. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I just work with microphones more than most people. Okay. Uh, yeah, the color palette is much brighter and more saturated than any of the previous series. Like, to kind of an insane degree. This is an incredibly saturated color palette. Uh, but also, uh, the line work, I mean, this is just a, a big difference in the style of anime. The, the lines are much thinner. Lines used to be thick in the 2000s. The lines, thin. Um, but it seems to have, at least, I can't judge it off the first episode. Let's not forget the first episode of the first season when there were just insane animation cuts. Uh, but it seems, I mean, I don't want to give too much credit to A1 Pictures, but uh, the animation is uh, more lively, uh, less less robotic, I would say. I, I I was definitely busting my load too soon when I complimented the animation quality. I wouldn't say it's particularly better in this series than the previous seasons. Uh, it's just different. Uh, but the, the, the dialogue is weird in terms of rhythm. It feels like everyone's sort of saying... It just sort of feels like people reading off individual lines and like there's too much of a gap between when people are talking like it's not like they're actually talking to each other it's like they're just sitting in a booth reading off lines it's a bit weird and the pace of this show is very different it's just different it's just it's a it's an unusual i mean yeah it's unusual for many reasons it was it's it's many years later um both in in canon and in real life uh don't have much to say. I'm literally still halfway through the first episode. I'm three episodes into Nanoha Vivid, and uh, I gotta say, so one of the impressive things about the Nanoha series up until now has been the sense of continuity and time passing. That it really does feel like one continuous world with a continuous lineage of characters. And when time passes, it really does viscerally feel like the same world with 10 years later or whatever. Like, yeah, between the first and second seasons, you know, Fate was in space prison and Nanoha, you know, has been sending her DVD video messages back and forth and whatever for a year. And you really get that sense. Like, it... It's very well done. And then the same goes in between the 10 years from A's to Strikers. Like, it really does feel like the same characters you've grown to love, exactly how they would be once they, you know, in 10 years on. Uh, Especially Fate. I mean, it's just on her characterization is Chef's Kiss. You know, it's like, yeah, this is Fate. This is what Fate would be like 10 years on. Uh... You know, and the world feels very continuous. The tone, everything. Vivid is not like that. Vivid feels like a completely different anime. <laughs> um, uh, just a completely different show with some characters with the same names. Uh, not to say that specifically Fate and Nanoha are still fairly consistent. Um, but they're not as central to this show. This is more about Vivio. Uh, and Vivio, you know, was characterized to some degree, but was mostly a really young child in uh, Strikers. And so, you know, whether or not... I mean, yeah, this seems like, yeah, Vivio would grow up to be a Genki Girl anime protagonist. Sure, that seems in character. Uh, and... I think part of it is that this is not about the same shit that the rest of Nanoha is about. The rest of Nanoha is 
it kind of looks like a magical girl show for about six episodes, and then it's a big epic space of a political struggle about friendship beams uh, with villains and universe-destroying stakes and so on, and space cops. This is not about that. This is the thing that I've always wanted Nanoha to be, which is the true soul of Nanoha is it's about cute girls beating the shit out of each other. And they've just fucking pinpointed down onto this is a show about cute girls beating the shit out of each other. And I love it. But personally, it's fucking great. It's much more focused on the cute girls aspect, which if you know me, that's my shit. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the combat isn't high stakes. It's just competitions. They're just fighting. They're just sparring. They're fighting each other for sport, which is fucking sick. And the hand-to-hand combat is just on another planet compared to the previous seasons. Like the previous seasons, you, you know, you could tell what was happening, but it didn't feel like a fight in any real way that a fight would feel even like a wrestling stage to WWE fight or whatever. Like, it felt like a wacky Dragon Ball Z fight or whatever. It didn't... It wasn't really choreographed to be like a fight. It was choreographed to... I don't even know. To to be like a story, I guess? Like, the individual moves that characters would use are more important than the flow of the battle as a choreographed dance. Whereas in Vivid, you actually get decent, you know, hand-to-hand combat that feels like someone put effort into it. It feels like someone had watched a martial arts movie before and was like, I'm going to do that. And the sound design is really good at that as well. It helps a lot. Personally, I'm enjoying this a lot so far. I don't even know how many days into this I am now. I'm going a bit nuts. <laughs> oh, God. I fucking was supposed to go somewhere with a friend today. And I was like, no, I got to cancel. I got I to gotta watch my whole show. This is not actually what happened. I just fucking uh, couldn't make it for various reasons. Uh, but... It does give me an excuse to watch Nanoha, so we're going to be doing that. Uh, this show is so much more no thank you pill than than anything that's come before. It's much it's much more moe focused, cute girl slice of life focused, which is well known to be my thing. Um, but that also means I have much more context to judge it against. Uh, you know, like stuff in this genre that I've seen. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's so bizarre (laughs) seeing all of these characters from a series of war stories about cycles of abuse and childhood trauma just in a different anime (laughs) but just about a bunch of girls in bikinis hanging out by a pool and playing around and having fun, you know, like it's so surreal. It's so it's not bad. It's just fucking weird. What are they? What are you doing here? You should be fighting villains in order to befriend them. And also, some of the characters from previous seasons are like, yeah, that looks like the same person. They have the same name. But that is a different fucking person. <laughs> like, they, that person has no relation. No relation in personality to uh, the villain from, from a previous series. Just makes no sense. It's, fi- it's, it's fine, I guess. I'm not, it's not bad. Like, I'm, I'm not not enjoying myself watching this. It's schlocky. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's schlock. It's not super, at least so far. It's just, it's just fun. It's kind of like a, it feels like a victory lap for the show. Yeah, fuck it. We're just gonna make this into a slice of life, cute girls out of me now. And I, I, hell yeah, hell fine by me. 
I just realized I've been getting Adio and Tia's names mixed up this whole time. Posh, sometimes randomly. The the girl, the redhead girl that kind of vaguely looks like Asuka is Tia. And Adio was the the guy. The redhead shonen boy. Look, this this anime has like 50 fucking characters in it, okay? I can't keep track of them all. Well, I just finished Mao Shoujo Lyrical Nanaha Vivid, and it was pretty good. It's only half a show, though. <laughs> um, it, it's just hot. It, it, let me tell you what happens in, in Vivid. So you get the first half of the anime, which is pretty much entirely slice of life stuff. I mean, there are some fights. And the fights are fun. Uh, but it's there's no seriousness or stakes or drama or anything. It's quite fan service heavy. Definitely the by far the most fan, fan service heavy part of the franchise. I think the first four episodes you see the characters either in their underwear or getting naked in an onsen every single episode. Um, uh, it's chill and fun. I like that sort of stuff. You know, the, the chill slice of life anime that's that's my that's my shit um and then the second half is the big second half of the show is the first half of a tournament arc um that just never concludes because there was never a second season of vivid it's an adaptation of a manga so i assume the vivid manga <laughs> you know finishes the tournament arc i'm assuming that that's the case maybe the vivid manga got cancelled at some point and never did i don't know i haven't read it uh but it's it's very unsatisfying because it's just the first half of what might be a good show. I don't know. None of the characters really get completed arcs, especially not Vivio and Einhart, because they simply don't. They're just the story stops halfway through. Um, they spend like the the last episode mostly hyping up the next tournament competitors that you're gonna see in the second season that doesn't exist and never will exist probably never will exist so i don't know how to even give my thoughts about it because it's an anime that isn't finished it's just it's it's simply unfinished it's just half a show like i what what are you supposed to say about half a show i can't give my thoughts about it it's it, it was okay it was okay it was it's interesting it's an, it's interesting because there was some so let so the, the tournament arc, the fights, how were they, and how was that 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 whole tournament stuff in general, which is the main focus of the anime, it's kind of what it builds up to, what it mainly focuses on. Um, it was okay. There was some good shit, mostly, but it wasn't amazing. There was nothing. There was nothing terrible. There was nothing where I was like, it, it, unlike the rest of this, this show is almost disappointing because unlike the rest of Nanoha, this is just a normal anime. <laughs> like it's it's not a situation where with every other season of Nanoha, it fluctuates wildly in quality, is paced terribly, and then once in a while the most insane shit you've ever seen happens and it's cool as fuck. It's not like that at all. Instead, this is just consistently okay the whole way through. Uh, like, it's not hard for me, to, I mean, it's hard for me to give a rating to a, this show because it's just half an anime, which is annoying, uh, but it's not hard for me, you know, it, it's very flat, very flat, there's, there's not really peaks and valleys, it's just kind of fine, yeah, it's okay, it's pretty good, um, the whole way through. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but as, you know, during the fight between Einhardt and Corona, which is the best part of the show. Um, there's a moment where Corona is using her magical golem manipulation abilities on herself to to basically like fight through the pain and the damage she's she's taken and manipulating herself like a golem. And then Einhardt's internal monologue goes like something along the lines of uh uh, a warrior fighting for sport in times of peace shouldn't be using a move like this. 
and it's good it's a good piece of characterization of like corona has a full arc in this show um because she actually she loses that fight and then that's the end of her arc and it, it, it works it's not she's not that fleshed out most of her characterization happens within flashbacks in that fight uh but it will it's fine it, it gets the, it, it's at least it's something at least it's, it's at least that bit's completed and um you know you get to see how like how much stock she's putting in this fight and then in the end she decides like you know what i'm just going to go back to the basics of what i've trained i'm not going to use this crazy move i'm just going to go yeah, and it, it's okay it is what it is but the thing i want to focus is, on is what einhard said this is what peacetime is like in the Nanoha universe. We've never seen this before. This is, in particular, this is what they've been fighting for the entire time. And I think that's actually something really important that recontextualized the whole show when I had that thought. Like, this isn't just a... Re like, yeah, it looks like and feels like a completely disconnected show that just happens to have some of the same characters from Nanoha in it. But in context, this is what the all of the Nanoha franchise was them fighting to protect this. Uh, which is pretty cool. It makes this stand out. Otherwise, this would be a completely not notable show in any way. It would just be a mid cute girls do martial arts show. Uh, but the fact that it's got this extra context around it does make it unique. Um you know, if you want to watch an anime about cute lollies beating the shit out of each other, you can definitely do worse than Maho Shoujo no Kondana for Vivid. And I I want to watch that show, so you know what? I I definitely don't feel I don't feel bad that I watched this. I it was definitely better than Strikers <laughs> in terms of consistent quality. Uh I had a much easier time watching it than Strikers. There were there were, I wasn't really bored very much there were a couple of moments but like generally speaking the first part of the nanoha franchise to be paced like a normal fucking show like very watchable um the the character designs are cute they've been good throughout the whole series they're cute the animation quality is pretty consistently good good not amazing but good throughout the whole show uh there were some interesting fights and some interesting powers um most of them aren't like that interesting the most interesting one in the whole show is a character that they would go on to fight in the season two that doesn't exist <laughs> that doesn't actually uh there's a, a character who's a uh uh fuck what what do they say in japanese in the english it says uh she's not a, a mage she's a witch um, I, I'm trying to, I think it's like, uh, Mad, whatever, Madjotskai, is that what I'm thinking of? Uh, Ma, Madoki Janai Ma, Majodes, I think is what they say. Ma, Madoki Janai, uh, Sono Kanojo wa Majodes, I don't know, I'm just make. I'm just, uh, not, I don't speak Japanese, I don't know why I'm, I'm, Kind of do that but anyway and so the fight you see briefly from her is they both rock up on stage the other girl rocks up the bell rings they're about to fight and then she just fucking mind breaks the other girl like she just s sucks the other girl into a mind psychosis prison and then you just see her being dragged down into like black sludge with like arms and, she, and then it, it cuts back to what's happening in the real world. And she's just standing in the middle of the ring, holding her head and just screaming. <laughs> and I'm like, I want to see what a fight with that character looks like. That's fucking sick. I'm, and she also had a great character design. Like, it was sick. But I will never get to see it unless I read the manga, which I'm not going to do. So uh, that's a shame. But that was cool. Uh yeah, weird, weird show because it's just half a show. That that is weird. It is weird that it's just half a show. It's hard to make judgments about half a show. Um, 
yeah, I'm glad. I'm definitely glad I watched it. But but I wanna I wanna say, um, so na na Nanoha franchise has now been completed. The mainline Nanoha franchise, every Nanoha TV show has been completed, and now I have to actually answer the question: How much other media do I? tack onto this video because I'm assuming this video is long as shit right now uh, but the next obvious thing is Vivid Strike which is the next TV show but it's not a direct sequel to Nanoha it is a spin-off series um, however as it turns out Vivid is also kind of not really a direct se- Nanoha is barely in it I mean if Nanoha is barely in Strikers as a character Nano is really barely in Vivid I mean she fights once in the whole show. Like, you ever actually get to see her fighting or using magic or any, being anything other than a side character. And for the rest of it, I mean, for the second half of the show, she's not even in it. She's just in a few scenes in the early episodes as, you know, Vivio's m- mom, <laughs> as a housewife, effectively. Um, which is cool, because it, it's always nice to just see Nano her grown up doing domestic things with fate. That's all, that's... I, I I love to see it. I kind of wish there was more of it. I'd watch a whole show that was just them raising fate. I mean, sorry, them raising Vivio. I would definitely watch that whole show. But Nanoha is barely in it. So then Nanoha being not in Vivid Strike doesn't really matter that much. Because Vivid Strike tonally... I, I, the, the thing is, I've seen Vivid Strike. It's the only one of these that I'd already seen all the way through. Uh... But I don't remember it that well. The only thing I remember really well from Vivid Strike is that it has a really fucking sick bullying revenge scene. So I've decided that I am going to rewatch Vivid Strike for this video. Um, even though it's not technically part of the mainline Nanoha series, it is a side thing. Uh, and Vivio and Einhardt from Vivid are in it as major characters they're not the main characters but they're major characters um and i also just you know i'm trying to i don't remember anything else about the show other than the bully revenge arc which i which is very fucking sick i mean i remember liking it well enough i didn't think it was amazing but uh that's all i remember i think it might also have a tournament arc in it i i don't know if that's right uh, so there's that, uh, which I think I'm going to do now. But then the other thing is I looked back and the other pieces of Nanoha media that I'd seen before this project were the two movies of the first and second seasons. There's a movie version of season one and Ace. Um, and I loved both of those. I, uh, a lot, which is what made me want to do this in the first place, is that I ever since I watched both of those movies, I thought I just need to watch this whole like fucking marathon, this whole thing. Um, but there's actually two more movies, which I think are set, I think are set in the interim between A's and Strikers. I think they, they, I didn't really look into it. I just saw that they exist. And judging from the covers, they kind of look like that. I don't know if I want to watch them, though, to be honest. Like, maybe I should. Maybe I should watch them. They're prequels. I mean, I... I this should be... This 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 video doesn't make sense as a gimmick if it's not, if it's not conclusive. If I don't watch everything. So I kind of have to. But I also kind of don't want to. Because <laughs> I think they're like back to grimdark war nanoha stuff which i kind of can't take any more of but then they're also just movies i don't know well i'm gonna watch vivid strike now i guess i probably won't finish it today but it's already been like what five days of of nothing but i mean it's not been nothing but nanoha five days of nanohas it's a lot of it's a lot of anime it's a, maybe it's not a lot of anime to everyone. Maybe some of you are, are giga chads who can just do nothing but watch anime all day, uh, every day. 
But for me, this is this is a quite quite a lot of anime, uh, especially since most of it isn't that great. But uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I'm trying to think if I have more things to say. Like that, the thing is, Vivid is much more generic. Like it, I don't really have that much to say about it. I feel like it's it's the girls are cute and they punch each other a lot. Like that's kind of all there is to the show. It's not got super deep characterization. There's not particularly like dramatic events. There's there's not really stakes. There's it's it's a slice of life. It's not like very comedy focused. There's not like funny jokes really. There's a few funny jokes in the show, but it's not like the focus is comedy. Um, it the fights are like really all there is to talk about are the fights, and they're okay. Like then they're, they're nothing special. I will say a couple of actually. Um, they've just forgotten that the characters can communicate telepathically, <laughs> like in Strikers. The characters themselves would somehow sometimes forget they could do that, but it was also really important to the plot that they did that on multiple occasions. But now, whenever characters want to talk to each other from a distance, a little screen pops up, and they FaceTime each other, or Zoom Zoom call each other. You know, like they the the, the idea that these characters can communicate telepathically has just been retconned away. They can't do that anymore for some reason. Uh, or they're choosing not to for some reason that they never... I don't know. It's it's dumb that they did that. Because that was consistently set up since, like, episode one of Nanoha. Is when you become a mage, you can communicate telepathically. That's, like, one of the key features of being a mage. I don't know. Kind of dumb. Uh, you know, the cute girls do martial arts stuff is not unique to Naroha. There's lots of, I mean, there's, there's lots of shows. I mean, uh, going back to like, I, I, I can think of Metal Fire Miku, for example. That's from the 90s. That's that's a cute girls do martial arts show. Like, there's there's a million of these. It's And it, it doesn't really stand, other than the fact that it's unique because it's part of the Naroha franchise and has that context I was talking about. It, then nothing else about it stands out. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's just not super interesting. It's not super unique. Like, it's... I wouldn't sit here and say, like... There's any... I can't pinpoint, like, really obvious flaws with the show. They don't, they're they kind of, you know... It's just it's just middling. It's just... it's There's nothing really great about it. There's nothing really terrible about it. It's fine. Um... Okay, now I gotta go watch. Now I gotta go watch Vivid Strike, and then I gotta decide if I'm gonna watch these fucking movies. Oh god, there's so much anime, man! It's so much. This video is like ten million years long. Oh, one more thing though, it's worth pointing out. Maho Sojo Lyrical Naroha Vivid was my four hundredth completed anime. That's right. I've only ever completed four hundred shows. I'm I'm a fake otaku. Honestly, I feel like I would have preferred Nanoha Vivid without the tournament arc. Like, if it was just the kind of schlocky otaku bait uh, slice of life with, like, onsen scenes every five seconds, I, I'm exaggerating the fan service help, but you know what I mean. Like, if it, was, if it was just them sort of hanging out and training, you know, and being cute for 12 episodes, it would probably be the best part of the franchise. <laughs> It's so weird listening let's, let's to the OP of Vivid Strike because I sampled this in, uh, I sampled it, I forgot that that's what it was from. I sampled it in um, Akiva Trap Star Connect. And so I'm just like, wait, why did I play my song? <laughs> the essence of Nanoha is you fight someone until they become friends with you. That's how Nanoha has always been. And Vivid Strike takes a twist on that formula with in this case you fight someone until they re to reconnect uh, to rekindle a lost friendship I also say that but Strikers doesn't really do this whole thing anyway so it's whatever 
fuck you. Uh, I don't really have, the, so far, I mean, what am I, episode three? Yeah, I don't really have that much to say about this show, but I like, I mean, it's, it's chill, it's cool. Uh, in terms of, like, there is a somewhat neat, um, continuity with Vivid. There's a there's a somewhat neat continuity with Vivid of seeing these characters again, but also it mostly just feels like I skipped a season of Vivid and I don't really understand what's going on because that's kind of what happened. I didn't skip it, it just doesn't exist. Um, I mean, not that it's super important, but there's definitely stuff with the characters from Vivid uh, that I obviously had no way of knowing the first time I watched this show that I, I was missing out on. It's not like you have to watch Vivid to know what's going on in this anime, but I do, when I saw the first episode, I remembered seeing it before, and I remembered feeling strange about the fact that they entered, like, you have the one main character, and then they go to the gym and meet every character from Vivid all at once. And they and it's like, holy shit, that's a lot of fucking characters you're introducing all at once. But obviously, if you've seen Vivid, you already know who all these people are. So it's not like a big shock. Um, so that's, that's an advantage of having watched Vivid before watching this show. Uh... Yeah, this just did like I don't know. It just feels like more vivid, <laughs> to be honest. Tone wise, style wise, like the the vibe, the essence of the show just feels like more vivid. If you liked vivid, you would like this, and if you like if you like vivid strike, you will like vivid. Like they are very similar in, in terms of general vibe, style, tone, pacing, themes, etc. I mean, they are effectively each other's sequel and prequel, respectively. So you should expect that, maybe. Um... There was something else I was going to say, but I don't remember what it was. I think episode four of Vivid Strike is like some of the best anime ever made. I'm not exaggerating. This is the the, the bully revenge episode that I was talking about. I didn't remember that it was all in uh, all took place in flashback, but like it's genuinely really well directed and animated and acted. Like it's just good. It's just good shit. Like there's. It's just really emotionally effective in every way. Like, there's this cut where um, the girl, she's been beat up by her bullies and just, like, left in the, the girl's bathroom, not able to go visit her grandpa in, her, in his final moments. And then it, it just, the camera just is just on her, like, lying in the bathroom. And then it just fucking hard cuts to her just in silence standing in front of the empty bed where her grandpa once was and it's such an effective cut no music sting no corny fucking music sting to tell you to be sad or it's just dead silence her just standing completely still in the middle of an empty room in front of an empty bed and is super fucking effective it's 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 just really well directed like, this is, and I haven't even gotten to the revenge part of the episode yet. I know it's coming. I know it's about to happen. I remember this bit, the best bit. Those girls that bullied her, they're fucking assholes. You really want to see them get hurt? It's great. This is a good show. I think episode four of Vivid Strike is the best part of the entire franchise. Like, the sound design when she's breaking the fucking bones of these bullied assholes is so 
like brutal. You can hear every bit of sinew, and but it's and I, and I know it's just celery. <laughs> Like I know how Foley works, but it does. It's still fine. It still fucking works on me. There's only one thing that has always put me off about this, and it's it's. Does this work? It's this shot. She looks ca- like there's something about the drawing where she like her neck is wrong. Like she look. It looks kind of weirdly goofy. Like, do you know what I mean? But then the rest of this revenge scene is, like, fucking perfectly done. Like, if you s- skip forwards. Yeah, look at look at this kick. Like, look at, look at this kick. One frame. And then you get, like, one frame where there's blood. Or, well, I guess, two frames where there's blood on the locker. And that's it. You just see the spurt in full motion. You just see like a spurt of red, and then there's also this like the remnants of I don't know. It's so good. It's so visceral. It's exactly what I wanted to happen to the villain in fucking Strikers. That doesn't happen. And then we're gonna jump straight from that. Into one of the goofy OVA episodes, because because this show has like OVA episodes that are like inserted in the middle of the show, and I'm watching the the full release that ha- comes with those episodes. So the next episode is a fucking goofy OVA episode, which is pr- I'm, I'm just gonna guess it's probably like a beach episode or an onsen episode or some bullshit like that, which is really funny to come directly after like you know that. Uh, never mind. That's actually wrong. These are supposed to come out of after episode five, uh, so that's not actually supposed to be next. I'm supposed to watch those after episode five and then go back and watch the OVA two OVA first two OVA episodes, and then the final OVA episode is episode thirteen. So we actually watch. Okay, this makes much more sense in the flow of the anime. Wait, the actual next episode is an onsen episode, <laughs> or a ba- bathhouse episode. They continue the plot from the flashbacks, and then they're just like, okay, now that I've told you that, let's just calm down by all getting naked. <laughs> you, I mean, look, you gotta respect it. You gotta respect it. So the devices in the first season of Nanoha are magical girl stuff things you know fucking sakura's little necklace thing that turns into a staff etc then in uh by the time you get to strikers devices are just technological doodads they could be they just sort of anything and they vaguely look like gems and then you get to vivid and vivid strike and in, and now they're just all cats. <laughs> they're just all cats. They're just little guy, and they're very cute. They're very cute. They're adorable little little guys. They're adorable little cats. They go nya, and you gotta love it. But uh, it's a, it's a they they've changed. They they they've uh they've changed a lot. They're no longer like. Me- Let's just remember that the devices in Nanoha were, like, particularly appealing because they were these mecha-style, very weapon-like, military-esque, almost, and they transformed in these very mechanical ways, and they all spoke German and shit, uh... You know what I mean, and now that and now for some reason they're like cute cats and and shit. It's like a little. It's just an. It's just odd. It's not bad. It's just an odd thing to change. I mean, it makes sense for the tone of this show, I suppose. It would also have made sense to just have them be cool mechanical things in the tone of this show. It's still a show about combat sports. It's not out of place to have, you know, cool things in the show. The show has cool in it, has cool fights. Also, characters from Vivid are showing up. Look, it's the guys I know from Vivid. I I, I need to point out, lore-wise, 
like there are problems with the new devices. It's it's one of the many things that is just inconsistent in the world, right? Like it was established really strongly in seasons one and two, then fucked with in Strikers and is now just completely different in Vivid, which is the case for a lot of things because Vivid is kind of a soft reboot, uh, I guess. But they are like, they're using the devices as if they are, I don't remember what they call them in Strikers, but in Strikers, there are these little fairy guys and the little fairy guys have something to do with Belkin something. I don't remember exactly what it is, but they're Belkin in some way. Um, one of them is Reinforce, and the other one is the bad guy version of Reinforce. But either way, with these particular... They're you something. They have It has a U at the beginning of the name. I, I don't know what the fuck it is. I, I, I'm going to look it up. Fuck it. I bet this says something... Do you think it will say something on Mal? Maybe on the Nanoha wiki? Okay, let me get back to uh, let me get back to Strikers, and click on that character in the character section. Ajito. Elkin ancient Belkin Unison device. That's what it's called. They're called Unison devices. So it's a type of device. I didn't know that. So is it, wait, but they don't refer to it as a unison device. Unison device is a particular special kind of device that you can like fuse with in the unison mode. But they don't call the cats in this show unison devices. They just call them intelligent devices, which is what the generic name for them is. Um, I suppose it's possible that this is law consistent, but... It's it's a bit sus. I'll just put it that way. It's like strange because this is supposed to be ancient Belkin technology of which very few exist. And yet the first time we're introduced to it is in Vivid when Vivio gets one in the shape of a teddy bear. But Vivio, does she fuse with it? Does Do they go unison mode? I don't remember. Maybe they do. They do. They do. That does. I think that does happen. So they're just unison devices. But then, like, I remember... She's like, oh, yeah, I can make that. Like, Hayate is there. And she's like, oh, yeah, I can make that. That's easy. We've already done one. What, what does she say? She, she says she's already done one before or something. Because of some, some re, like we're just recreating this technology that we already made, and so we can just use it as a as a as a template is the sort of sort of thing she says in in Vivid. Is is there more? Can I get more information about this somehow? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can get more information about this, but it. I feel like that this is weird. Like I feel like I. These, this is not the same way that intelligent devices were used up until now, basically. And it was like a particularly special and unique power that you had these Unis, ancient Belkin unison devices that were, that you, I mean, they didn't even show up until uh, Strikers. And in Strikers, there were only two of them, one of which is from the, 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 the Book of Darkness, Hayate's Book of Darkness, that only exists because of the hyper-specific uh, universe-ending consequences stakes of uh, the ending of uh, A's. And the other one has been like, was, was an authentic, actual relic, a ancient Belkan relic, uh, who was like rescued by a guy from being imprisoned for, for scientific research. So, so, so scientists could study her, um, at, implying she's very unique and special and needs study. Uh, and never again do any 
unison devices come up. I need more information about unison devices. Um, let me get more information about unison devices. Uh, let me read. The, let me read the whole page for Ad, Agito. Zest and Lutetia rescued an ancient Belkin unison device without a master, Agito, from rogue scientists who are experimenting on her. She has no memory of before she was found by them, and has a sworn rivalry with Reinforced Two due to her reign having a master when she, Agito, is without a lord. Due to the circumstances of their first appearance, Agito is under the impression that Vita is Reign's master. Agito refers to Lutetia and Zest by nicknames rather than their real names. Okay, yeah, sure. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this is... As with her, Signum is fully synced, like them doing... In the epilogue, she still seems to have... I don't know about... I don't know about any of that. It's not really relevant. Maybe there's a NanoHub wiki we can look at. Because this will have information from the from the comics as well. Okay, we want. Let's look at uh, vivid strike characters, um, and then devices. Hurricane, which is which is uh, Fuka's cat. Autonomous action type intelligent device. Unity type device. However, it's likely referring to the absorption for auxiliary control instead of an alternate name for unison device. Because what I'm saying is, when these girls fight with their devices, the cats go inside of them and meld with them, and you get shots which parallel the same type of visual language which is used for the unison devices in Strikers, where the you get shots of the devices in a sort of like strange background, abstract background, as if they're like inside the soul or essence of the person. The same visual, so that there's some something's going on here. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't super understand um what other devices do we have see that's just a normal one so normal ones still exist a bunch of normal ones still exist um yeah it's very odd <laughs> that there's just one uh okay is there can I see something about her, her device? Nanoha presents her with a device. Yes, this happens. I remember this. This happens in Vivid. A kind of magical terminal. Extremely versatile. Although given the series focus, most of the devices are treated as weapons. It's not the case for the vast majority of mages working in peaceful profession. Basic function of any device is to augment their master's magical abilities in a system and casting spells. Since, since blah 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 blah, they're they're like computers. Synchronization because of the very close blah 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 attuned. For this reason, keep using and upgrading their own devices rather than by getting new ones. Uh, classification, we have. Okay, this article this this article disagrees with the previous article. This article says unison devices, also known as unity type devices, have only been developed by ancient Belkins. But the previous one said unity devices and unison devices were different. Uh, hybrid intelligent devices have been introduced in Vivid as a distinct category, though detailed information on them has yet to be appeared. They appear to be a middle ground between mid children intelligent and ancient Belkin unison devices. They are presumably the same as the autonomous action type intelligent devices in Vivid. You see, 
I, I'm just going to go ahead and call this a law of inconsistency. They, they've just sort of done whatever they wanted. And I'm just too autistic to accept it as, I mean, this is, this is that I, I think we can, can we safely assume this is a law of inconsistency? If unison devices are supposed to be ancient Vulcan technology only, why do so many people fucking have them? Suddenly, the the weird evolution of devices throughout the series is actually quite interesting. Because in the original season one, they are not implied in any way to be like conscious. They're just weapons. They're just cool magical girl weapons. Then in A's, they ask. Ask to be upgraded with the, the cartridge system by just sort of like reporting an error. Like when when they're being repaired, they report an error message for a missing part, and that missing part is the cartridge system. But they don't. They're not out here like you know, ha- fucking talking. They 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 have some magical soul like thing. Like they have, they they are not just inanimate objects. They have desires, but they're not, uh, you know, just sort of creatures. They're not guys. <laughs> they're not guys. They're kind of guys. They have their own wills, but they are not having conversations. In Strikers, they are now just guys. They are now like in Strikers, they start just having conversations in English with uh various characters like there is literally a device who has a character arc in strikers uh subaru's device has a character arc like they are now characters they're not just and then but like even then it also gets more as the series goes on like at the beginning of strikers they are not so much characters and by the end it's just not like it's very normal to have full conversations with your device. And it was sort of a frog in a pot boiling situation where they like slowly changed how conscious these devices are and you don't really notice. But then now by the time you get into Vivid and Vivid Strike, these devices are just fucking... and. The unison device in Strikers is different because that is a full-on fucking little fairy person, okay? But that's a unique ancient Vulcan thing, maybe. Uh, And by the time you get into now, now they're just, like, guys. I mean, uh, Vivio's device like talks i mean doesn't actually talk like talks in sign language like an r2d2 c3po you know what i mean like a or like a like a chewbacca like a chewbacca situation where the little stuffed toy thing that is her device just sort of makes sign motions and then the whoever they're talking to is like oh you want to you're telling me blah 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 you know like sort of repeating what they're saying back to them for the audience is one of those type of characters. And now they're just that kind of, but they're also just like cute little kittens now. It's it's just odd. It's not necessarily bad. I'm not necessarily, I mean, I would rather if everything was consistent, obviously, but it's just an interesting thing to point out. It's the sort of thing you wouldn't notice if you didn't watch all of these in sequence back to back, which is the point of this series, was to discover things like that. I should say, in A's, when Sacred Heart and Bardisha ask to be fitted with the cartridge system, it's not treated as normal. Like, it's treated as unusual that the will of these devices is, like, particularly strong. That's also, like, something else that's notable. Okay, I need to go to sleep now, Uh, but hopefully tomorrow will be the final day that I am laying around watching this show. Uh, I mean, I'll definitely finish Vivid Strike tomorrow. It's just a question of whether I get through both movies. Also, after talking about how I was supposed to watch those OVAs, I completely forgot, so I also have to go back and watch the OVA episodes tomorrow. Um, 
But yeah, I think something worth mentioning is some of the animation cuts for the fights in Villastrek are really good. Like, this is a really solid show. I'd forgotten how... I, I only gave it a six the first time I watched it. But this is like... A, it's, it's, it's pretty fucking solid. And episode four is amazing. But even the other episodes the, the, during the tournament arc, you know, some of these fights, let's not, like... What's interesting is that all of Nanoha other than Vivid was animated, produced by, by Seven Arcs. Uh, Nanoha was actually the first ever Seven Arcs anime, TV anime. Uh, Vivid was animated by A1, A1 Pictures. Um, but then Vivid Strike is back to Seven Arcs. And you can see that they have stepped their game up big time because, let's be honest, uh, the first three seasons of Nanoha, they are not particularly well animated. It, I think it looks fine because I'm used to watching anime that looks like that, but it is not like a high standard of expensive Sakuga animation. Um, there's not even really like individual well animated cuts. Like it kind of has other other than in the first episode of season one, there were a couple of shots in season one of Nanoha running where they would just like throw a bunch of frames at it, <laughs> throw a bunch of frames at it right at the beginning in episode one and two. It's like Nanoha is running, throw a bunch of frames at it. Uh, but other than those particular uh, cuts. There's there's not much impressive animation in the, in the Nanoha franchise, um, and even in Vivid, it's clearly a step up in terms of like uh, the way the hair moves, for example. Like hair in every other Nanoha season is just kind of static. In Vivid hair actually moves according to physics and, and with, with a sort of natural flowiness uh, that you don't really see in the other seasons. Uh, but, you know, I have to say, in Vivid Strike, Seven Ox really stepped up their game compared to how they were in 2007. Uh, and you can see that quality improvement, that there were some genuinely impressive cuts of animation during some of the fight sequences that are probably the best the series has had outside of movies. Uh, and that is something that's worth uh, deserving of praise. Um, I think on a re-evaluation, I'm going to end up rating this show higher than a six, which is what I had originally given it. I think within the context of the wider Nanoha franchise and so on, uh, I'm probably going to end up giving this show a higher rating. Uh, that being said, I'm also thinking about Strikers and how I gave that a six, and I'm kind of wondering if it deserved it. I'm, I'm like, thinking back on it and thinking about how much of a slog it was to get through. Like, I don't really have fond memories of watching Strikers. Uh, I, yeah, I really don't. It was, it was... I don't know. <laughs> I, I just don't. Um, so, like, five? Do, I'm, I'm considering downgrading it to a five on, on reflection. Uh, you know. I gave... I, I don't know. Maybe I'll keep, I'll keep it at a six, but it's a low six. Let's just, let's just keep that in mind. That Strikers is a low six. It will stay at a six for Vivio reasons and for Nano and Fate all grown up being cool reasons. And for some parts of the final climactic fight sequence being kind of neat uh, and conclusive character arts arcs. Not amazing, but I would describe them as competent. I would describe some of the character arcs as competently executed. Uh, you know, it's a borderline six, but it's just about a six, I think. Uh, anyway, I need to go the fuck to sleep.
we're back with what will hopefully be the final day. Um, I'm w- watching episode 5.5, uh, the OVA episode, and uh, it's yeah, it's not very good. It's it's kind of dedicated to justifying how a pure martial arts fighter can keep up with like magic users in a fighting tournament, and it makes no. I mean, it obviously makes no like. <laughs> yeah, you're, they're trying. I give him a like maybe one point. You get one point. Actually, I don't even think you. I I think I got a takeaway points. It was better when they didn't they didn't give it any attention, and when you just kind of accepted it. Like it was obviously stupid, but it was just stupid anime bullshit. And now they're like drawing attention to like how come it's possible to fight against a, a giant rock golem as a just regular martial artist like yeah a strong very strong martial artist but yeah they should i don't think they should have drawn the fact that this is why normally when there are ova episodes that just like are set in between regular episodes they are just inconsequential onsen beach fan service episodes because you can't do any character development you can't have anything plot relevant happen so it just has to be nothing and this isn't nothing they're trying to like draw attention to something where the whole point was that they never drew attention to it so that you didn't think you you didn't you didn't question it it was just like yeah that's a that's just a fact about this universe like martial artists are crazy strong it's a not a it's not like a crazy unheard of anime trope that that happens in lots of different shows uh and media in general like martial arts are not just punching people but also some like pseudo mystical thing that's not a new invention like you don't have to lampshade that that's a that's a concept that's been around in media for a very long time that i mean that's basically a concept that goes like that's an ain't like literally ancient gimmick there are like ancient epics it's like the the tale of genji does that you don't you don't need to you, you don't need to do this well, very weird like i don't know who was asking for this they just made filler episodes but why like normally when anime has filler episodes it's because it has to you know the, the it's catching up to the manga uh there's not enough man- you know what i mean like why why just invent filler episodes for no reason very strange decision to make these OVA episodes. I don't know why they did that. Um, it's, yeah. It's, they just add nothing to the show. Something that's worth noting is that the tagline for Vivid Strike is Thou shalt not be afraid, I am with you. Which I just think is a, a bit unusual for a show like this. It, it's very, um, God's in his heaven, all's right with the world. But for a show that is mostly about sort of cute girls hanging out with each other and punching each other. I don't think this show has the weight that would uh, require biblical language. So it's very clearly established that the fighting tournaments in this world are delineated by age group. So you have the under 15s and the under 19s and then presumably just like the, the real fighting tournaments. Um... The thing is, it doesn't make any fucking sense because all the characters, when they fight, use devices to age themselves up to adults anyway. So, like, what, you know, normally if you have age groups, it's kind of like for the same reason you have weight classes. It's not just about how much time you've spent training. It's about weight classes, basically. That's, That's why normal sports might be split but it but but they don't need this because they're all just fucking going otona modo anyway there's a couple of characters who are holdovers from the actual nanoha franchise on series mainline nanoha series um who the, the 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 religious the church there are people who refer to vivio as Eka, as your majesty and if you hadn't like they never explained that in this show 
they don't go into anything about how Vivio and Einhard are like reincarnations of ancient Belkan knights, which kind of makes sense because if they did, it would kind of break everything, I think, because they are like, in terms of power scaling, way more powerful than the, most other people in the show. Uh, so it, it wouldn't make sense for them to like be struggling to beat middle schoolers. Like they, uh, you know, they're, li- they're, they're the reincarnation of ancient Belkan knights. Vivio was introduced, sort of. Like, Vivio's original arc was that she was kidnapped because she's so powerful. And then a bunch of evildoers kidnapped her to harness her ancient Belkan power uh, in order to, like, move an entire fucking giant spaceship. Um, So, like, it's obviously kind of absurd that they're, like, struggling to win fights against middle schoolers. Uh, And Einhardt's the same way. Um... But you can't think about this stuff too much. Otherwise, I mean, yeah. Um, but anyway, if you hadn't seen any of the rest of Nanoha, like I hadn't the first time I watched this show, you would be very confused. Why it's, Why does one person refer to Vivio as Your Majesty? It didn't. It, I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember noticing this back then. But I'm sure it would be confusing if you hadn't seen the rest of that on her. Well, never mind. I was completely wrong. They actually did do that. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> That's so funny that I was like, oh, this sucks. Because you know they're never going to let Vivio win. And then Vivio fucking wins. That is that is so fucking funny that that just happened. Okay, well, I gotta give the show points for that. That's actually very, that's actually sick that they had the balls to do that. I did not remember that happening at all. Uh, uh, holy shit, that was un- that was a- that was a surprise. I I don't I don't know what to say. I gotta give this show much more credit than I was giving it. I suppose they actually had the balls to pull that shit. That is fucking sick. I really hope I really hope that's act. This is an actual thing, and they're not gonna pull some bullshit and like make it not count or something. Like somehow to to but I I don't know it doesn't look like they're gonna do that but apparently I don't know what the fuck a show looks like it's gonna do either way because I just got that prediction entirely wrong <laughs> I gotta get that's a ballsy move I gotta give it that I I I I I didn't expect this show to have that much balls and you know that's just elevated by perception of of the writers. I want to, the, the thing I got wrong, the prediction I just fucked up, like, that is not, this this was not a random throwaway moment in the show. This is maybe the big twist of the show. So maybe it's fine that I got it wrong. It was, I, I got it, I, the, the show had me wrapped around its little finger. It was reading, it was playing me perfectly. It was, it was playing perfectly on all of my assumptions about tropes, about how this kind of show would go, even based on having watched Vivid previously in order to lead me down the path of expecting Rene to win. Um, and then all to pull this twist, which is then a sudden fork redirecting the entire plot of the show. This is, like, actually good. Like, I really wasn't giving this show enough credit. Maybe, it, like, even the fact that the show's writing up to this point has been... I guess pretty good, but nothing, it hasn't had any moment like this that would show that it was setting something like this up, you know what I mean? Like, even that plays into the fact that the twist was very effective. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of floored by this. I'm very, I'm actually, like, I was kind of losing interest in the show. I was like, oh, okay, it's just another tournament arc, just like Vivid was. Okay kind of boring and now like suddenly i'm back on board i actually am really curious to see where rene's art goes from here i have to say the final broadcast episode of vivid strike is kind of shit it's kind of garbage because it's all an epilogue and exists to tie up loose ends except that there's like one loose end that it gets tied up immediately so it just it's kind of a whole episode 
of epilogue for a story that doesn't need an epilogue, and so it just weighs down the entire plot. And you know, there is such a thing as recency bias. Like I can't imagine seeing that on TV. Like I can't imagine seeing the the big emotional climax in episode eleven, then waiting a whole week and episode twelve comes out and it's just nothing. <laughs> It's just kind of an epilogue for a story that doesn't need an epilogue. It just kills the momentum of the final episode. Like, oh, what did these characters get up to after the end of the final episode? Exactly what you would expect if they just left it implied. That's the answer. Um, also, the OVA episodes are so weird. The two OVA episodes, episode 5.5 and 5.75, exist solely to... Remind the audience that magic exists in the Nanoha universe. Except that you don't need reminding of that because it never comes into play in this show. It's just it's just weird. Not to say that it's bad. Like I'm complaining. It's not a, the show's not amazing. Look, I'm not hit I think we can make a judgment. I haven't actually watched the the final OVA episode yet, episode thirteen. Um but we can make a judgment about the show right now. And that judgment is it's like Vivid, but better. If you liked Vivid, if you liked any aspects of Vivid, you will like Vivid Strike even more. Because it's an actual complete story. Uh, the characters are more interesting. The fights are better animated and better choreographed. Uh, the twist, it, has, it also has episode four, which is absolute Kino. And basically justifies the entire existence of the show. And then it has a twist which you don't see coming, but I now know the reason I didn't remember that uh, that that Rene loses that fight and that, that it's a big twist is because it actually has no consequences, which is very disappointing that uh, she loses the fight and then ends up fighting Fuka anyway, just not in an officially sanctioned match, which is what would have happened either way. It doesn't change anything about her actual arc or plot. Like, she just gets a bit sad about it for half an episode, and then is like, okay, I guess I'll fight again. Like, I quit fighting. I can't believe that I lost to Vivio twice in a row. And then is like, okay, fine, I'll fight Fuka. <laughs> and it has no impact. Like, they could have just had them fight in the tournament, and the arc would have been exactly the same. The mechanics of the arc would have not changed at all. Like, that twist... Was I? It, it, I didn't say it coming. It was effective as a surprise, keep you on your toes, but it it actually doesn't function as a twist because nothing about the fundamental mechanics of the story change because of that. It's kind of unimportant, actually, in the grand scheme of things. It 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 feels like a big twist, and then it isn't. It doesn't really have any consequences at all. Like. Let's actually think about how strange it is that Vivid Strike exists. That there's a show with a very, very similar premise and shares the same characters in the same universe, etc. That is unfinished. There's only the first half of the show. And then instead of making the second half of that show, they just skip that. Time skip past the entire second half of the show to make a completely different anime that just assumes you know what happened like a bunch of characters that were introduced in vivid but didn't actually come into play as like proper characters show up in vivid strike like post arc you know friends with everyone as if they've gone through some shit together Like, is it really the case that it was easier to sell the concept of Vivid Strike than it was to sell the concept of a second season of Vivid? If so, why? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Was Vivid a flop? Was it a situation where they were like, well, existing Nanoha fans don't like Vivid because it's so tonally different from the rest of the series, but it's popular with its own group of fans, so... If we just like strip anything Nanoha related, like I mean, I said Nano. I think Nanoha and Fate have a cameo in. Vi they don't. They don't have a cameo in Vivid Strike. They don't show. They're never even mentioned. The military is never even mentioned. In fact, like anything about the bureau or anything related, it's just not even mentioned. It's purely a uh, cute girls do martial arts show. Um, 
<clears throat> even stuff related to the magic system it only really comes into play in the OVAs and not the broadcast version. Uh, yeah, I'm watching episode 13 right now, and then I'm going to take a break. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my... I just watched my, the Vivid Strike. I'm, I'm going to do that section. Then I'm going to go play TF2 for a while and take a break. Then I'm going to pop a caffeine pill and blast through... Uh, what is it? Nano uh, reflection and detonation. And then we will have actually finished this video, which is insane that I actually did this. I just finished a vivid strike. And with that, I have finished all of the Nano TV shows, which is perhaps more consequential than you would think, which I will talk about after I talk about vivid strike. So vivid strike. Um, what do I say about it? It's, I said earlier, it's like vivid, but better. And in some ways, that's true. Uh, in particular, uh, I was disappointed with how standard and flat Vivid was. Uh, whereas Vivid Strike is much more willing to take risks. There are fairly decent twists and turns in the story. There is episode four, the bullying revenge episode that goes into um, Renee's backstory which is the peak of the series by a mile. Unfortunately, it comes pretty early on and never really gets surpassed. Uh, but that episode is great and uh, very, I don't know, very emotionally effective. Um, it's just a great little self-contained story that uh, effectively sets up this character. Uh, the, you know, but it, it doesn't really take that many risks. Um, and the big final fight between Fuka and Rene is cool, but it's, uh, it's cool. It's a bit standard. It kind of happens as you would expect it to play out, um, which is a little disappointing. Uh, but mainly because it's so standard and, and stock, it, it kind of fails to really be emotionally cathartic in the way it's supposed to because it just sort of feels like you're watching a stock storyline rather than, uh, you know, two particular characters with their own particular struggles um, reconciling. So in, in that way, it's not that satisfying. And then even the emotional weight that you do have from that climactic fight gets deflated by episode 12 being an epilogue that is completely unneeded and just adds a bunch of extra bulk to the end of the show so that you it deflates all the, the tension and catharsis which if you're watching it including the OVAs then goes into episode 13 which is a pure beach episode here's the entire plot of episode 13 the characters all get together they go to the beach they swim in the ocean they play beach volleyball and then they eat some snacks that is the entire plot of episode 13 like there's not even really jokes and they're all at the beach in, like, bikinis, but they're not, like, drawn sexy or anything. It's not really a fan service episode. It, I, I don't know what... I don't know. It, it's just a bog. Uh, it's the way you kind of would expect from an OVA. Uh, but if you're adding that, then it really... Def any, any... I mean, I give it credit for the fact that they become girlfriends at the end. I give it credit for the fact that they literally say Daisuke to each other and hold hands. And it's, a, you know, the Nanoha franchise, well known for having a highly uh, functional Yuri couple at its center with Nanoha and Fate. So more Yuri is always good. I'm never going to complain about more Yuri. Um, but I think Vivid Strike is probably one of the higher points of the series. Uh, it is generally competent. Uh, and sometimes it goes above and beyond. Uh, but even at its baseline, it's rarely bad. It is sometimes bad, but it's quite rarely bad compared with like Strikers, which is often bad. <laughs> um, uh, so I would rec and I think I would even recommend Vivid Strike tentatively, even if you haven't seen the rest of the series. I mean, I certainly remember watching it before I'd seen anything else really and enjoying it well enough. So it's not a strong recommendation. But if you are just sort of bored one day and want to look, watch some martial arts anime 
with Q Gels in it, then you can definitely do worse than Vivid Strike. Uh, again, compared to Vivid, Vivid is a little different. Where Vivid is less for less. So Viv Vivid starts off with a bunch of slice of lifey stuff, and it's also Viv Vivid is much more fan service heavy. Like it's it has a lot of onsen and changing scenes and stuff like that. Uh, and then in Vivid also. It starts off with the plot line kind of similar to all of the rest of the series, where it's like these two girls with different uh, worldviews uh, are going to fight each other until they become friends with um, Einhardt and Vivio. Except that in Vivid, that takes up the first like four or five episodes, and then the rest of it is a tournament arc where they're already kind of friends. Um, which is a little disappointing. Like, I would have much rather the the. It's not necessary. I'm sure the tournament arc in the manga is fine. If it was finished, it would probably be much better. But I, it makes more sense to me if Vivid was more focused on the tone and pacing and vibe, not martial arts, big narrative drama but just kind of hanging out and these two characters slowly becoming friends over time uh, with fighting as well, like, and martial arts training involved and a bunch of fan service because fuck it. Uh, like, if that was just all that Vivid was, because Vivid Strike already takes care of, oh, here's your big t tournament arc martial arts fighting thing. Now... It's worth noting that the fighting in Vivid is like mixed magic and martial arts. So they use they use magic and they also use hand-to-hand -hand combat and swords and all sorts of bullshit. Whereas in Vivid Strike, it's pure martial arts. No no magic allowed. But for some reason you're allowed to except for sometimes. <laughs> it's not super clear what the rules are, but nothing that looks obviously like magic other than transforming yourself into an adult uh like they use devices and they do transform into adults but they still do hand-to-hand -hand combat they're not firing beam attacks or summoning golems or uh you know any of the, those sorts of other things no weapons just hand-to-hand -hand combat kick kickboxing rules not even grappling uh just sort of kickboxing or muay thai type of situation uh In conclusion, the Nanoha franchise can be split into really three different sections. And we're going to actually now come back to something I, I set up a minute ago. The three different parts of the Nanoha franchise in anime are um, Mao Shoujo Lyrical Nanoha, uh, Nanoha A's, and Nanoha Strikers make up the uh, grand sci-fi saving the universe narrative military, war story, melodrama uh, with beam attacks, part of the narrative, part of the story. Then uh, there's the vivid part of the story, which is vivid and vivid strike, which is the cute girls do martial arts tournaments uh, part of the story. And then there is the films. And this is where things get weird, which is that the films aren't canon. And this is why I'm not even sure that I want to watch uh, the movies. So there are actually four Nanoha movies. There is Nanoha Movie The First and Nanoha Movie The Second A's. And those are retellings of the first and second seasons of the show, but they are not canon. They are literally in-universe documentaries about the events that took place like canonically, they're in-universe documentaries about the events that took place in the first and second seasons of the show. Um, and the same is the case for the third and fourth movies. The third and fourth movies are based on concepts from one of the Nanoha manga, because um, there were two simultaneous manga. There was one manga that was what Vivid was adapted from, and then there was another manga which was a more dark war story continuation of that part of Nanoha. Um, and parts of that manga were then adapted into these this two-part movie, uh, or two-part pair of movies, um, uh, which are called, like, Reflection and Detonation. Uh, but they are literally not canon. 
like they are not part of the they are not the same they're not canon in the same way that vivid and vivid strike are canon they are in universe movies as well they are just in universe movies about events that we never saw in the tv show uh, which presumably take place either after Strikers or just before Strikers. I, I don't know. Um, and so for that reason, I think it makes sense kind of to skip them. Uh, but there's another reason that I want to skip them, which is that I am just fucking burnt out on. I am burnt the fuck out on I'm Nanoho, man. I can't, well, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know, man. They're like, why would I waste... To, like, if I'm going to watch those movies that aren't canon, but they are canon to the movies, this is the thing. Like, there was slight changes in Nanoha movie, the first and, and second A's, um, like, to characters' outfits and to their backstories and so on, which are canon to the um, reflection and detonation. So, like, at that point, I'd now have to watch four movies... Which, you know, then I could definitely say I have watched all of Nanoha for this project and no one could ever possibly complain. But I'm kind of thinking I can't sit here and watch Nanoha anymore, man. <laughs> I don't know. I, it might happen. It might happen. But if it does happen, it's going to be the movie continuity. That It's a different continuity. It's non-canon. I think it's completely reasonable to separate it off from watching the main i don't think it counts as part of the mainline nanoha series so uh i think it's perfectly reasonable of me to separate this off if i do go back and rewatch the first and second movies and then watch the other two movies um it'll be a different video it might be a patreon exclusive video even i don't know but uh, it, it won't be in this video this is the end of this video you're watching now um if i had to rate Vivid Strike, I think I would probably... I gave it a 6 before. Um, I still feel... A, it, I think I would give it a high 6 to a weak 7. High 6 to a weak 7. Um, I'll give it a weak 7. Just mainly it's episode 4 that pushes it over the edge. But also, I do think that um, Rene's arc is fairly well handled and satisfying and unique within the series uh it's not you know I, it's kind of stock but it's not that stock like it's unique enough to be memorable in my opinion uh although i did forget entirely about it last time i watched this show so i guess not uh i'm tempted to upgrade it to a seven uh i need some time to stew on it i suppose uh so the nanoha franchise overall it's very hard to actually give an opinion about the Nanoha franchise because it is really two different things. There's there's the, the first three seasons and the last two seasons are completely different. They are set in the same universe, but they are not related in, in any real tangible way. And even then, the first two movies and Strikers are also kind of different because, uh, sorry, the first two seasons and Strikers are also pretty different. Like, Nanoha and Fate aren't the main characters of Strikers, whereas they are the main characters of the first and second seasons. Now, the peak of Nanoha, I think, is definitely Ace, without a doubt. Ace is the best story. It has the, the best aesthetic to it. It has a good soundtrack, at least in my opinion. It, it, it has the most interesting emotional moments. It has the most unique fighting choreography um, and interesting mechanics. It, it, A's is, I think, undeniably the peak of the series. Uh, and it's not a flawless show, but in its uh, in its imperfections, it's really unique and interesting. Uh, so if I, you know, it's if you are listening to all of this and thinking, this sounds vaguely interesting, but I don't care enough to watch that much anime, you should just watch the first and second movies. Like, the first and second movies are genuinely really good, especially the A's movie, genuinely really good. And they're just two movies, so you can definitely find some time to watch that. Uh, Strikers is the low point of the series. Strikers is fucking ass. <laughs> um, I don't know what I gave it, but I, I feel like it's worse than I gave it credit. I don't know. I, I have no fond memories of watching Strikers. Like, it, it's just, it was just painful. 
it was just a slog and painful to get through. Um, the only po- the only positive to strikers was having getting to see fate and now her grown up and raising a child. Now that was that was fucking sick, uh, and that just about justifies the fact that I watched it. But it like that's that's it. That's all you. That's really all you have, and that is not the center of the story. That is a side thing that happens later on in the show. Uh, so you know, eh. It's a big fat air for me. Is the Naruto franchise overall good? It's good. It's it's better than bad. Like overall, it it averages out to a positive rating. I didn't give any of these shows a negative rating, um, but at the same time, it is far from a perfect uh, series. Um, especially once it gets away from. I mean, it's such a stupid... Dis- Strikers is the dumbest thing I've ever seen anyone do. <laughs> like, you have the first season, which is kind of an interesting, unique gimmick of, like, a magical girl show that turns into a sci-fi narrative with, like, darker themes aimed at adults. Like, that's kind of an interesting and fun narrative. And then A's is a way better story than this fucking franchise deserves. Like, A's is, like, actually really emotionally impactful, has somehow 20 characters all of whom are really interesting and fleshed out and fleshes out fate and nanoha's relationship in such a great way that their chemistry alone is enough to like just being in the background is what i've said justifies the existence of an entire separate 26 episode anime and then they're like hmm yeah let's make fate and nanoha background characters for the rest of the series fuck you (laughs) this is what an idiotic decision um but a very unique one not something you would find anywhere else in anime or in any other media uh and of course in the meta of this whole show's context you know the fact that this is based on the triangle heart visual novels and a ostensibly something like a magical girl show for adults long before like madoka or anything like that uh you know that is kind of also interesting and unique although i i still would contend that nanoha is not really a magical girl show after the first like eight episodes of or six six or so episodes of the first season are the only times when nanoha is really a magical girl show like the rest of the show has practically nothing to do with anything to, like the magical girl genre um other than the fact that they're technically are girls and they technically are magical uh, but it has none of the same characteristics as magical girl shows like Card Captor Sakura or Ojimajo Doremi or Hard Catch Precure or whatever the fuck. It's like, even as an action magical girl show like Precure, it is very, very different. Um, even compared to other adult otaku oriented, darker magical girl shows like Magical Girl Raising Project or Madoka. Uh, Nanoha has way, way less of the Magical Girl aesthetic as a gimmick. Even Magical Girl Sight, which is like the the most edgy, emo, darkest Magical Girl show that I'm aware of. I haven't seen Yuki Yuna, though. I'm not very interested in watching Yuki Yuna, uh, so don't tell me to do that. But, uh, you know, as far if I had to guess what this show is close to, it's probably similar to Simple Gear, but I haven't seen Simple Gear. Uh, but it, it, I would probably guess that it's something like that. That is up until you get to the whole vivid part of the show when it is just not that. It is now just like a, a, a sports tournament arc. But magical girl martial arts, they're not even mad. You know what I mean? Cute girls do martial arts. Uh, it's fascinating as a thing that exists. It is like, damn, it's crazy that culture can produce something like that. And it's really cool that otaku culture can produce something like the Nanoha series, which is why I justify having a Nanoha poster on my wall over there. Where is she? Over there. Um, Because it is a symbol of the unique stories that only otaku culture is able to produce, uh, which in itself makes it valuable. Um... The other thing that I've watched that is similar to this and on my wall for the same reason is the Strike Witches series or franchise. But 
although the lows of strike witches are much lower, like Luminous Witches is much worse than anything in the Nanaho franchise. Uh, significantly. Like Luminous Witches, I think, is probably like a 3 out of 10. Uh, nothing in the Nanoha franchise is as bad as Luminous Witches. Um, but there is nothing in the Nanoha franchise except may maybe A's. I don't know. They're kind of similar in the same way that they're both vaguely magical girl adjacent, although it's more Mecha Musume, it's kind of a slightly different thing, but inspired by the action magical girl genre. But they're cute girls doing fighting each other, doing war. Cute girls do war. They're both cute girls do war stories. Um, you know, I think actually as an otaku series, Strike Witches is more otaku than Nanoha is. Like, I, I, actually, I should I should flesh this out. Nanoha is more old school otaku because it is a big sci-fi space opera like what they used to do in the 90s. Uh, whereas Strike Witches is not a big sci-fi space opera like they what they used to do in the 90s. It's a show about a universe where girls don't wear any trousers. That's a... Uh, or skirts. They just only wear underwear. That's, the, that's what... So it's more modern otaku... Uh, dame ningen, <laughs> you know, uh, pervert oriented, and as a pervert, I approve. Um, <clears throat> so then, yeah, I wish Nanoha was in the franchise more than she is. That's the final conclusion of the Nanoha franchise. I wish uh, also throughout the whole series, there are about five million characters. Um, and Fate is the best one. Fate is the best Fate is best girl in the whole series. Everyone knows this because you can go on Mal and look at the characters and see how many favorites they each have. And Fate has by far the most favorites. Because Fate is the most interesting character in the whole series. And they fucking underutilize her. Uh, and her and Nanoha's relationship. Uh, you know, all of that time in between A's and Strikers. I would love to see an anime set there where Fate and Nanoha are, are fucking chilling and stuff. But with the tone of Striker, uh, with the tone of Vivid, <laughs> like I want to see Vivid, but with Nanoha and Fate, I want to see them hanging out and having fun. I, I would, I would fucking kill to see a Yonkoma slice of life with Nanoha and Fate set right after the end of A's, of them just chaoning around, just hanging out and eating cake. That would be the perfect. That if that existed, that would be, the, that would be literally the perfect anime but it doesn't exist. And the closest we have is the first few episodes of Vivid, which aren't that good in terms of quality. Uh, like, the thing I want to impress upon you is that something like A's and Strikers are really good shows, I think, but in a genre that is less appealing to me just as a person, to my personal preferences. Uh, but they are like better executed. They take, they're more interesting. They take more interesting risks. Um, and they stand out from the competition a lot more. Whereas Vivid and Vivid Strike are shows that are much closer to my personal taste in anime, but because of that, I can tell that they are not particularly unique, and they don't really do enough to stand out among the the better shows in the more slice of life cute girl-oriented side of anime, which is the side of anime I'm well-versed in. Um, so, you know, that... It's it's just, I don't know, it's vaguely notable, I suppose. Uh, do I have anything else to add about the Nanoha franchise? Uh, you know, you can, you, I hope, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't know, how long is this video gonna be? I guess we'll find out. It's probably gonna be long as shit. Thank you for watching the whole thing. Uh, if I ever do get around to making uh, the movie continuity to extending this to include the movie continuity, uh, then, then I will, I suppose, and then it will it will happen. I don't know when or where. It might it might end up on Patreon. So you, you, the, your only option, if you've enjoyed this, is to head on down to the Patreon link in the description and give me a couple bucks just so that you can be alerted as to when the. the that's your only op it's the only logical thing to do in this i mean it's lit it's the only reasonable thing 
it's the only reasonable course of action for you is to just start you know subscribe to my patreon it's the only reasonable course of action uh so yeah nanoha pretty pretty epic <laughs>